Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the chat and the live stream late night with Mike. That's right. We're doing a late night with Mike. As always, welcome to the chat. Let me know how is the audio doing, how's everything doing. I think we're, we have a working stream tonight. Um, yeah, late night with Mike. I think that was the biggest voted option of all the options that I asked you guys in my mini poll um, in that, uh, you know, YouTube question that I asked you. I want to know what you want this to be named. And Late Night with Mike, I think it's a good name for, uh, for now. I like it. I really like it. All right, this big bad box is the Harry Potter Hogwarts um, Astronomy Tower. This is the last of the big sets that I have to build uh, from build some time ago. The Burrow is the biggest set of the wave. And the Burrow is something that we should be comparing this to because these sets are both 100 bucks. This one is like about 100 pieces less. Um, has similar amount of, I think the same amount of minifigures actually. Oh wait, the Burrow I think has, how many, how many minifigures has the Burrow? Um, I got a bunch of boxes here. Okay, so eight minifigures against eight minifigures. So the same, basically the same. I'm just gonna get those boxes out of here. Same amount of uh, minifigures, but slightly less pieces count. And, you know, less of a look. I think it's gonna be a look at one so much. The review I made was like my favorite review I've been doing for a, in a while, for sure. Um, and I wanna just see what we are dealing with here. I think it's gonna be pretty awesome. Welcome, Chad, by the way. Thank you so much for joining today, Brick Star Wars Boy. Uh, Ash Meredith was telling me that she purchased the Attack on the Burrow, and uh, thanks to my review. So I'm glad, I hope you enjoyed this set. Oh, there is like a. I have dropped frames like a lot. Okay, I had some lag for a second, guys. I'm sorry. It wasn't me, my internet. Um, not enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Open widget. YouTube not receiving enough video. Okay, I had I had a few dropped frames for a second, but it's all back to being good now. Okay, never mind. It's not me. It's just my lovely internet. Uh, it's dropping. I have no dropped frames anymore. Maybe my kids are watching Netflix or something. I think they do on three devices. Uh, I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. So welcome, Brickstar Wars Boy Gabriel. Welcome, Studio Brickton. Welcome back, Ethan. Br Before the Brick Films, all the favorite names. Steve Gamer, welcome. Technically morning for me because I'm from the UK. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, I'm doing those late night streams in California because people from Europe are actually joining and that, that makes me really happy. Um, I'm doing fine. Yeah, great. Late night show with the cool factor would be a better title. See, it's a bit too long because what I want to do, I want to squeeze the name of the set, whichever I'm building, or if there's going to be a new stream or anything, whatever I'm doing, it's going to be in the title and then some show name. So I think the late night show with the cool factor after the actual title would actually be too long for a YouTube title. So I think late, sh late night with Mike is good. And I was thinking about late night Mike, just like that. All right, but just titles aside, I think we should open this set. Just hang out and open, right? I got some cookies tonight. I got some juice tonight. It's a very chill stream. It's a very good night to stream, actually. Good start of the week. It's Monday, at least in California. For some of you, it's Tuesday already in Europe. Let's see. Let's see if my cameras are working. I think we're doing good. Yeah, we can use this one for now. I switched the chat just a bit, so you guys can probably see your messages better. Uh, but I, I still can't figure out why I have like single color for all the nicknames in the chat. I can't find the setting to fix that. If anybody is familiar with like Streamlabs chat settings and can me can tell me how do I change so that not all the names on the chat are like purple right now. I it it keeps bumming me. I I, I see this. I see other streamers having like warriors names on the chat and uh, mine is always single color and changing automatically like I have no idea what is happening I'm a noob here so tell me how do you fix the chat on Streamlabs so it doesn't show like a single color for nicknames all right I'm gonna keep this one for the all the plastic and all everything 
Hey, Mike and Ike, welcome. Don't mess up the heads. When was the last time I messed up the heads? I think it's been a while. I think all my heads as of late of Harry Potter are correct. Yeah, I changed it so it looks kind of like a Twitch chat. I think it's easier to read because I had those boxes. I don't know, I'm gonna keep it for now. Let me know what you think. Um, I'm kind enough to add the chat to the screen. Not everybody does that. So be nice. Um, I need to... Okay. But yeah, uh, I, I don't know why the names are in single color. Like, I don't know. I know a reference. I, I love that reference, actually. Yeah, I, I, I get that. I love that reference, okay? I just... I'm just saying that it's it's just too long of a name for a... For sure. Plus, I heard it's retiring this... Uh, this September. December. Hey, Whiskey Shred, welcome to the chat. Welcome to Late Night with Mike. I'm gonna need that one. That's bug number one. We have... Uh, one, two, three. Actually, only five bags of bricks. Okay, six. Okay, six bags of bricks. I feel ya. Okay. That's five. I'm just util utilizing my floor to the maximum here. Three. And a two. Alright. Uh, I'm gonna keep this one for now. Okay, yeah. Cool. There was lag again. Drop frames. 10% in over last two minutes. 10 frames. Yeah, my OBS is like uh, warning me that we have dropped frames, but it says it fixed now. I think it was my internet connection going off and on for a second. Disconnected stream. Interesting. Okay, I mean, it's not me, it's my internet. I never had issues, like, as of streaming lately, but I think right now my kids are watching, like, some movie on Netflix, so maybe that's why. I'm streaming basically on 60p at 6,000 bits, so it's, it's quite a high-quality stream, but I think we're good now. It says 0% back. It's, like, reconnected and 0%. So if you said it has any disconnections, just refresh the browser. I, I, I'm too good of a mood today to be bothered by some technical whatever. It's working now, so that's good. Okay. Finn, welcome. How do you make cards on the screen I while you're streaming? I have no idea. I set up cards once, once I set up my stream, and that's it. Oh, I've seen, like... It has stream had no data, now it's healthy. YouTube is also seeing some issues, but I'm good now. It's just my lovely internet, that's all it is. All right, welcome to American internet. You pay a lot of money for that and it never works as it's supposed to work. That's that's welcome to America. Okay, so the first bi bit of building is the greenhouse, just next to Hogwarts. And I think this set is based upon uh, the Horace Slughorn's party, right? That's what it is. So how, how have you guys been this weekend? Any good things happened this weekend for you? If you guys have seen my post, I went to... to LA to see the Tesla Cybertruck. That was something I was looking forward to. It's on display at the Peterson Automotive Museum. And I was bound because initially it was on display until June 26th. And I, I missed out on tickets because everybody just bought up tickets to, to see the truck. And I think the last day they announced that they're expanding it for another week. So I immediately went to the website. I purchased myself a ticket for Sunday before they went sold out. They were sold out in like an hour. And drove there Sunday morning just to see the Cybertruck. I, what, it, what ended up happening, I went to the museum and I love the Cybertruck. It's amazing see to um, think to see like in person. It's so much more stunning than uh, from that Elon Musk presentation. And I ended up like actually seeing the whole museum, which is an amazing place to be. I have a full vlog in the works, by the way. I'm editing a vlog for you. Uh, and they have like everything from DeLorean, the actual DeLorean using the movies in the Back to the Future, to the Batmobiles. 
they have like a Bugatti Chirons and Le Mans cars and they have uh, Minority Report, Mad Max cars, um, Blade Runner cars, all the actual cars that were used in the movies, not the copies or anything, the actual cars that were actually driven by actors in the movies. Like, I don't know, Deckard Keynes played up by Ryan Gosling in the new Blade Runner. They had the exact same replica that was used in the movie. That is super cool. No, I did not drive the truck. I wish, but it was the, it was the very same prototype that Musk showed and it's, uh, it was on display. So you were, there were no test drives whatsoever. It's a museum. It would be cool though <laughs> to have a test drive of the truck right there, there and there. But yeah, I have a full vlog about, I think, 250 clips from the museum so for you might be a bit boring because i'm gonna just be walking around and showing all the cars but for me it was very fascinating so i'm gonna just do a probably a longer vlog from that um other highlights they had a vault that has about 250 classic cars from a private collect from private collections and you had to pay extra ticket to get there but i went there it's basically an underground garage where you get to see for example the ford gt40 mark III, or you see you get to see the very first Ferrari ever made. The GT, the 125S. From like 1954, I think. That's, like, this car is worth probably more than the entire building. But uh, yeah, I got to see it. The first car, the first Ferrari that got the V12 Enzo Ferrari engine. Um, which is insane. Only two were made. Only two of them were made. Ever. Hey, Brickwiz. Yo, what's up, dude? Yeah, another vlogging coming. For sure. Oh, we got the Mandrakes prints. I'm gonna show you guys in a sec, but we do actually have Mandrake prints. Hello, Cage Natemon. Welcome, Natemon Games. I'm sorry. Welcome to the stream. Um, the leather cut in LA. What is the leather cut in LA? Is there another museum, Tremaine? Welcome to the chat, by the way. Thirty-five percent of big sets. What do you mean? What are you guys talking about? Is there a super big promo somewhere? Rain, welcome! In America, this LEGO set will be released in two days. Are you sure about that? <laughs> I don't think LEGO America is getting any Harry Potter until like August 1st, I'm afraid. This one, I, I had to get it, this one from Europe, as all the other ones. So, if you have any other information, that would be amazing, because uh, as far as I know, all these sets are scheduled for August 1st and not earlier. It's not July 1st, no. Is anything actually... Is anything actually coming to the shelves on July 1st in the US? Because Europe has all the good stuff right now, but we in the US have nothing. I mean, people were... People have been getting the Marvel stuff, like the Iron Man bust, and I think the Hulkbuster set. Um, but that's about it. I didn't hear about anything that is being, <coughs> excuse me, uh, becoming available in on July 1st. Arman, welcome to the chat, man. The new clone heads are amazing. I've seen that from Ash and Flash. Are they making the um, like nougat tan color um, sc color skin um, clone heads, which is. I guess a, a good improvement. Ooh, we have like a three wide windows. I did not see those in a while. Or ever. I don't know. Did you guys ever see the three stud wide oops, windows? I don't recall them. <clears throat> Lots of cool cuts from 1920s to 1960s. I shall check it out. I was, I was amazed how cool that um, Peter Sid Museum is like. Because of the virus, I had I only had like a two hour window to see the museum and they had to like get another group of people. But I think I'm going to come back and spend like five hours there because I, I vlogged. So I, I really rushed to the museum. It's like three floors of cool cars and history. It's an amazing building too. 
And I spent like an hour on the cyber truck, honestly. That was like the main reason I went there. But I saw like I did not prepare at all. I was like I wanted to be surprised. And I you enter the museum and you see the DeLorean, the actual Back to the Future DeLorean just standing there in uh the future configuration with the flying, um, you know, um, engine and um, all the like interior is open and the flux capacitor is there. It's so cool. You guys will see the vlog. You guys will see the vlog. But I wasn't expecting this to be that cool. I just went there for the cyber truck, honestly. I was like, ooh, what a surprise. Hello, Red Brick Redemption. Welcome back to the chat. <clears throat> the cool factor, could you give us tips on how to make our vlogs as good as yours? I absolutely love them and I want to make vlogs just like them. <laughs> Great question, Thin. I don't think I, I have the answer. Um, thank you for liking my vlogs and thinking they're, they're good. Appreciate it. Honestly, I think it takes practice and huge influence by good vloggers. So, <laughs> okay, if you're influenced by my vlogs, just like try to, I don't know, get yourself a camera and see how you feel vlogging. For me, it took me... I don't know, like a year since I ever grabbed the camera to act like, the first brick vlog to actually be comfortable on the camera and like know how to edit them. It was tough. I was inspired hugely by Casey Neistat. Um, and Casey Neistat is, is the guy that inspired me to actually learn editing. So that you know, you have to be, I mean, you don't have to be, but it's, it helps when you are inspired by somebody. And I studied his vlogs. I didn't want to copy him necessarily. So I, I, loved, I loved his uh, music, music use style, for example, and I, I was inspired by it. So I searched some music and I, you know, music is a big part of my vlogs nowadays. But I think as I shot more and more vlogs and I practiced with my camera, just like being actually comfortable while speaking in the public and just shooting everywhere I like. Then, I mean, it took me a year to get there and then it was just practice and practice and practice and editing and practice and, you know, so... You know, I've been editing videos for like four years now, so I think it helps when you are when you know what to shoot, and when you when you know what to say on the vlog, when you know what it's gonna be about, and at the same time you kind of think the edit. I like to say that exp expression, like th think the edit. So you shoot the vlog and you know how it's gonna look like when you edit it. So I know like which scene goes after which. Like when I when I go, I like okay, I wanna say this in this corner. Okay, that's a bit too long, so I'm gonna switch. Um, my background for the next sentence I'm gonna say and I'm gonna this is where the music comes in and I'm gonna get some b-roll here and there so when I edit I know where everything goes um, it's easier for me because I have practice I have experience like if you are just grabbing the camera and trying to vlog you won't get the same results you will have to vlog like 50 100 times and make videos out of those vlogs and the first ones will be pretty bad I've gotta tell you like the first vlogs will be bad and that's how it goes and then after like a hundred vlogs, you actually become comfortable and know how you work them and how you make them. And I think what Casey Nice has said also is that never try to copy someone. You can get inspired, but if you copy someone, you're already losing. You're making this wrong. You don't have you you can't copy someone. You have to find your own style. You can get inspired like I did. But in the end, what is in the videos is you and not somebody else. So you have to practice a lot to see what you like and what you don't, right? I was like overproducing vlogs in the first place, but I thought that like I wanted to be more genuine. So I stopped overproducing them as much. So trying to keep the editing simple. And then I found the format that worked for me. But again, it took me, took me hundreds of videos, not only vlogs, just videos in general, because editing is a process you have to master in order to like it, um, in my opinion. So, lots of practice, my friend. Just grab the camera, shoot 5, 10, 20 vlogs. Think about how do you want them to sound, how you want them to look. Familiarize yourself with the camera like it's your second hand. This is the most important thing, I think. Some people just buy the camera and like vlog twice and like, I hate it, it's too difficult. Well, you did not master your camera. Like, I know ins and outs of my camera, this one. I'm, I'm using this one for everything. Um, and it took me also some time to to feel like I can grab this camera and set it up in like from vlog, from live streaming to vlog shooting in like 30 seconds. Um, audio everything. And that's very important. And I still make mistakes, you know, and I still make mistakes. Um, so there is no easy answer, <laughs> as, you, as, you, as you can tell. Uh, welcome, by the way. Jay Hunter Brickwood. Hi, Mike. Welcome. 
guitar player should take advice too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how do I play great guitar? Where you practice for hours on end and maybe you become good after, you know, 5,000 hours of playing guitar. That's the same with vlogging. Anything, editing, making YouTube videos. You gotta start. You just start. Like, you have a phone to shoot your vlogs with? Fine, use the phone. Just shoot that vlog, edit that, think you like it or maybe hate it, but still publish it and see what people think. And also the big aspect of vlogging is you, you have to forget what people think. People will don't like your vlog sometimes. We will just will maybe don't like you or what you have to say. So you have to go, go over it. Like publish, put yourself out there and then you become a vlogger. I'm not even a vlogger yet. Like if I was a vlogger, I would like post every day. But I'm not there yet. By the way, let me show you what we have here. We have the Mandrake, um, sort of like a patch. <laughs> And this is cool because like just just like in the movies when you when you get the the mandrake out of your is that will you focus please how do you oh, i think it's focused okay so remember the movie when you like put them pull the mandrake out of their um you know little um enclosure whatever they just ah they just scream like ah so it's cool like you actually get those i I did not see that piece for a long time. I think it's Harry Potter piece. So you just get them out and they are all printed faces. Very cool. So initial good design for the um, for the, the greenhouse. And just put them in here. Very, very nice. I like it quite a bit. Rain Erickson. Awesome. Yeah. Quick Productions, welcome to the chat. Yeah, I saw the new tro Clone Trooper heads. Yeah, somebody noticed that. I think Ashen Flash. I've played guitar three hours a day for 20 years, not with a goal of sounding like someone else. Yeah, Whiskey Shred, I think, summed it up very, very well. And since we are at, you know, trying to look or sound like somebody else, talking about vlogging or playing music, let me tell you this. Comparison? is the death of joy. Think about it. I love that quote because it applies to everything that we do on social media nowadays. If you compare yourself to some like Instagrammer who has like the travel life, all the money in the world, all the fame and everything, guess what? You're gonna feel bad because your life doesn't compare, right? Same goes with YouTube. You see like other YouTubers being like successful, getting millions of views, and you start to compare, you know, looking at your like, you know, 100 subscriber channel and you're like, I'm not like them. I'm terrible. I'm not good at this. Wrong. You don't see the hours and years of dedication of work behind those channels and the work and the practice they went through. You don't see that. You look at Case Nice and say like, oh, he has so many subscribers. His video gets like 100,000 views in five minutes. Yeah that cost him like five years of work to get here. You know, I see my videos, I get like, you know, 300 views or a thousand views in a day. And I'm like, that's awesome. That's like five times more than I got like six months ago, you know? Um, and I just like my process. I don't have to compare to anybody else. Of course, I sometimes get bumped out by saying like, oh, they got some sets early. Oh, they're gonna get all the views. Like, you know what? It doesn't matter. As long as you do your stuff and like get keep like focused on what you love love doing and practice on it, you're gonna get there at some point. Sooner or later, you just have to really, really um, have your goals like set in place. You know? Do I have goals? I kind of have goals, yeah. And I think my goal right now is consistent work on on whatever I'm doing in my life. It's like not like oh, in a year I want to have like a million subs. It's a bit of a stretch, okay? So my goal is to just stay focused and stay consistent. Um, I think that's my main demon, to stay consistent. Um, hardest thing for me to do right now with like keeping the work ethic and at the same just time just living and not burning out. <laughs> so I think we it also applies to like people who want to be somebody else or who want to do something like somebody else they forget that it takes a lot of dedication and like self-control to get there. So yeah.
What's my favorite Harry Potter movie? Um, oh my god, I did not see Harry Potter movies for years now. I don't remember. I think it was Azkaban. I think it was Azkaban. I'm trying to be consistent, Vladimir. Thank you. Like, I know sometimes, like, a week can have, like, four videos of mine. Sometimes it's, like, two videos. Sometimes it's five videos. But I think, like... My goal is to not have a week without a video for now. Like, I think the worst thing I can do right now is, like, post five videos and then, like, go silent for, like, two weeks. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to avoid. So if I... I, if I feel good about myself if I post a, a video a week and, like, I say, like, yeah, I posted that. I wanted to make sure... Because sometimes I have projects lying for, like, a week and I don't edit them. And I don't want to have that feeling or that um, lack of motivation, you know? So I try to at least post something every week because I do have backlog projects for sure. And I think I'm getting good. And then it's gonna get like two videos a week as a goal, then three videos a week consistently or more and so on and so on. I think I'm gonna just like expand upon it. Anybody knows some good free music? YouTube music library is really good like right now, Finn. I mean, the music I'm using in my channel is Epidemic Sounds, so I pay for it, um, but for Beyond the Brick, for example, I use YouTube Music Library and it's excellent. It's growing, it's free, safe music, check it out. Also, you can find some uh, artists on SoundCloud, which I was I used to use uh, SoundCloud back in my Brick Vlog days. And a lot of artists you can find on SoundCloud, you just have to read their description. And sometimes they just freely allow the use of their music. Or you just have to credit them in your description or you just have to politely ask them if you can use their music. And I have a few like folders in my in my catalog from artists that basically allowed me to use their music no matter what, and it's really cool. Just SoundCloud, it's it's good good source. Um, let's see where 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 are we at? Let's finish that little thingy. How's everyone? Partial Studios, welcome. How to stupid, right? Like that's your previous name. Apprentice builds, welcome to the chat, to the stream. Australia is tuning in. Uh, yeah, so you guys from, you are made east from Australia, people from Europe. See, so that's what really makes me want to keep the late night streams going because yeah, people from the east coast can kind of still tune in because it's, I know it's late. So you guys are still here. Um, West Coast, California is actually a pretty good time to stream, I think, because many people are like at home chilling, so they may just as well watch, you know, a stream. Uh, I know I, I do, I watch streams at night a lot. When I edit or work at night, I put somebody on Twitch on my second monitor and I, I just have some background noise. I don't even chat with them. I just watch some gaming like in the background while editing. So that that's what I do. So I figured like, hey, I can do this. I can stream. Maybe somebody's going to watch me. <laughs> And yeah, Europe is like morning, Australia is like midday, yeah. Am I going to connect this to the towers? So here's the thing, I do not have the previous Harry Potter sets, unfortunately. I do not, like all the Harry Potter sets that I used to review or anything be in the past was the property of Brick Vault. And I never purchased this set, so yeah, I feel bad about it. Because I really want these sets right now, but I do not have any of the other sets from that were like expansion of Hogwarts connected to this one. So that's the only one I have right now, like in my personal collection. Yeah. I had all the, I, I, I know I've seen all the sets. I had all the sets in my hands back in my brick vault days, but uh, I never owned any of it, of it. Okay, the corner. I would love to see like a comparison, but I do not have these sets, unfortunately. I have the burrow on my table because like I think we're gonna compare these two sets because they are at the same price point um, in this wave. So many people, I'm, I'm sure many people are considering like should I get the tower or should I get the burrow? Um, I, I'm sure a lot of people have the, you know, a hundred bucks in their, in their hands and like which one should I buy for now? I mean, get all of them if you can, but some people can probably choose between one or two. 
Mike, when you talk to your friends and relatives in Poland due to the 10 hour time difference, what time of day do you guys talk? It's uh, it's not 10 hours, it's about 8 to 9 hours depending on the time of year or the uh, the time zone or the if it's like a summer time or winter time. Um, usually I call my parents on the weekends in a, in our morning. So we call them like my kids call them on Skype and we talk like whole family talk um, around 10 to 12 p.m. 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Sun Saturday and Sunday. I don't usually call people in Poland on a weekday because people just work or you know or I work in the morning here in California and they like it's evening in, in Poland. So sometimes yeah, sometimes we do have an occasional like chat uh, on a weekday, but usually it's weekends in the morning in California morning. It's like a like a little habit we have right now. Has anyone here ever... Anyone here seen or heard of Satina? No, I have no idea what it is. I was playing darts today and when I threw one it didn't stick into the board. Instead it came back at me and tried to catch in an instant. My hands hates me. Oh, ouch. I hope you're okay. Ouch, that's an ouch. It's funny how I built every, the, the whole thing and I didn't even assemble the minifigures. I don't know, I, I, I keep doing this, honestly, like sometimes I do minifigures last for some reason. That's fine, we're gonna do Harry and the Horace is in the first bag. Doesn't hurt? Well, you're lucky because some, I, you know, I heard stories of people like puncturing their hand with a dart. It can happen if you know, if you if you're not careful enough. And that can be very painful too. If you puncture your hand actually. The worst types of wounds are punctures, right? That's why when you like fence and fencing is like the fencing, you know, thing is, I don't know how you call them, swords, I don't know. They use them in the past because punching, puncturing someone is more damaging than slashing someone. Because a deep, a thin deep wound is harder to heal, I think. That's, that's, that's why like, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm talking about. But let's, let's not, let's not talk about, about, uh, about slashing people on the stream. How about that? <laughs> what is the most expensive Lego set you ever bought? Uh, yeah, the, the Falcon. I mean, I got the Falcon in my, in my closet in the box. So yeah, 800. So that's the most expensive set actually made. Oh, that's interesting. So we do have those Ninjago um, sword handles as as design elements in this. Check it out. See? That is super cool, actually. I don't see really. I don't really see these elements, uh, you know, beyond the Ninjago sets. Kind of cool, huh? Yeah. Kinda cool. Oh, so that's the rooftop. Oh, that's, that's dope. Da! I messed up. I need an extra layer here. I think so. Yeah, that's a second layer. Whoopsie. Okay, so that's why I was like, why do I have extra one by ones on the table? It's not supposed to be like that. Okay, now it's good. It should be supposed to be higher by, by one plate. All right. Nice, it fits very snugly. It's pretty snugly in here. See, so it's like... Yeah, but it doesn't move at all. I should not, I shouldn't have done that. Because all the mandrakes are screaming at me right now. Forgot they're not connected. <laughs> what do I think about the newly announced idea sets? Uh, welcome, Orange Coy, by the way. Uh, I think I, I had my opinion on the um, Beyond the Brick news stream. Uh, I'm not very excited about them, honestly. Mike Sesame Street will have 3,662 pieces! 
What? That is massive. 18 plus August 1st. Is it official? I gotta wait for the official release. That's massive. Like, geez. But yeah, the new ones. Um, I don't know. Home Alone. Okay, yeah. You know, everybody lo likes Kevin. And I've been watching Kevin every Christmas for like the last 20 years, probably. Um, Seinfeld. Have no idea what this is. I never watched the show. I know it's a kind of a big show in the US, but it's never... It was never in my sitcom list in the US. I watched, you know, Big Bang Theory, The Office, uh, Two and a Half Men, you know, The Friends sometimes. But Seinfeld was never a show for me, ever. So I have no emotional connection to this whatsoever. I, I don't really, no connection whatsoever. I had slight connection to The Friends set and I love the set, but I, Seinfeld is like, whatever. Uh, and the piano is a cool item. I think the piano is the coolest. But still, these sets don't seem like something I'm jump onto like right away. They're not like, you know, they're not like, I don't know, NASA Saturn V level of excitement for sure. I think NASA Saturn V was the set when it was announced, I was like, yes, yes, I want this, you know. Nothing about these sets makes me want them that much. Like day one, mm, maybe eventually. But yeah, dude, that Sesame Street is massive. I gotta, is there any official release? Amazon Germany has the details. Oh, so it's gonna be all over the internet in a second, probably. I'm assuming Brickfan will tell us about it. He usually spots those things. Cool, I'm gonna check it out, thank you. Anybody knows the Ideas Piano? Uh, at some point, I mean, it's gonna be made, right? At some point. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the minifigures. Oh, and you get the Hedwig. I mean, this Hedwig is appearing, I think, in every set at this point. Yeah, the piano was approved, I feel. I feel. So, maybe I should check out that Seinfeld shot. Maybe, maybe I'm gonna get hooked before the set comes out. Actually, I, I kind of, you know, look for a good sitcom to watch, but... Maybe Seinfeld is the right thing to go for. Okie dokie. Are we good with this? Let me see. Okay, I think that's all. Okay, let's open bag number two. I'm gonna just move all the extras. Two, we got extra scissors, extra wands as usual. I just keep them in my little bag of shame. Bag of spare pieces that's getting full kind of. But yeah, with that 3,000, almost 4,000 pieces, that um, Sesame Street will be like $300. Thoughts on Seinfeld? Again, don't ask me because I have no idea what the show is about. I should maybe watch it. Is this set based on the third, second or third Harry Potter movie? I, I won't... I mean, you can tell me because I, I, my, my memory is very blurry, but this is based upon the Slackhorns party. Which one movie was that? And I think there is an Easter egg in the tower with uh, Draco Malfoy as he's using the, uh, the scope. I don't remember that scene very well. Again, Harry Potter for me is like... I've been into it like six years ago. Seven years ago, so it's a it's a bit rusty. Um, okay, show sh the minifigs. I think they're pretty cool. We get the uh, Hedwig. You guys know, I mean, know her. She's in pretty much every set, even in the burrow. Horace Slughorn. Very cool printing. Horace had like questionable fashion choices. But the print really shows that, so I like it. And the second face expression. Yeah. Uh, Horace is exclusive to this set, I believe. Harry in his, like, festive outfit. Also, like, the printing on the legs. She's a, That's the adult Harry. Not the kiddo one, like in the, um, in the other sets. Okay, so we got too many figures out of eight. Let's go to bag number two. Yeah, minifigs are sweet. 
So I guess, yeah, we're gonna compare these two sets and see which one holds better value overall. Hey, Brickman. Don't you just love building a big Lego set on a snowy night on a Christmas Eve and watching Home Alone? <laughs> exactly, Rin. You, you, you and me are the same. Like, yeah. Um, being in California, I spend my Christmas like with just with the closest family usually. So yeah, doing something cozy and watching Kevin, it's something that I like to do. I don't know, like, I'm not sure if, if it's the thing in, in the other countries, but in Poland, Kevin became a meme for Christmas. Like, there's people laugh and it's serious, like, it's, it's a cultural thing at this point, because our TV stations played Kevin every freaking year on the Christmas Eve, like, every time. So, you, you it got to the point that people would, would say that there is no Christmas without Kevin, without Home Alone. In, on, on one of the TV stations. Every time you want you, you finish the supper, you do the, all the festivities and there's always Kevin. First Kevin, uh, Home Alone on Christmas Eve and the second uh, part on the Christmas Day. Every year and like when when a station cancelled Kevin for one year, um, people signed petition in the thousands to reinstate this to the um, TV schedule on Christmas and they actually did it. Because they wanted to stop this tradition, but the people hated it so much that they wanted to see Kevin again on Christmas because there is no Christmas without Kevin. That's crazy. That's a, that's, a, that's a Polish thing. I don't think if you guys have it in other countries, but for us, Home Alone was this movie that was associated with Christmas, like, I don't know, like Coca-Cola or, or presents or, you know, it's a thing. It's really a thing. So I grew up with this movie. It's like every time, it's like... They just change the times so, and you ask your family, hey, when is Kevin today? Like, are we having the festive dinner? And then Kevin, everybody Kevin, everybody Kevin. Everybody watch Kevin, it's like a family thing every year on Christmas. Watch Kevin together. So yeah, and play, building a Lego set, yeah, I think for sure. <laughs> uh, Horace Slughorn party takes place during the sixth film of the saga, The Half-Blood Prince. So it's a late film, okay. Have I ever been to Switzerland? No, I did not. And I really want to, because I see all the beautiful pictures of the Swiss Alps or the, your guys' scenery, and I just want to go there at some point. Uh, I don't know, I just want to travel more at some point. I don't think I traveled enough in my life. I should travel more. I've been to places, seen things. Probably Hawaii is my favorite thing, place to be. Um, but I'm sure I haven't seen so many places I should just travel. I, I have Switzerland on my bucket list, I have New Zealand, uh, Japan. Japan mostly like a foodie trip, you know, just for eating stuff. Probably. And seeing Tokyo overall, but food, food is the main reason. What sitcoms are most popular in Poland? Um, Big Bang Theory was a big thing in Poland. Uh, yeah, uh, The Office, many fans. Um, some Polish sitcoms that you never heard of, but yeah, we have Polish sitcoms that were kind of popular, but never ever were shown beyond the country television network. Um, Two and a Half Men, Friends. <laughs> Friends was big, like really big. Um, anything else from like the... Seinfeld never, nobody knows about Seinfeld in Poland. Um, I don't know. We had some licensed shows that were more like reality shows, but sitcoms, some sitcoms, but licensed shows like The Big Brother or The uh, Got Talent uh, were in Poland, like in their Polish versions. But sitcoms, yeah, Friends, Big Bang Theory. Um, anything else? I don't know. I don't remember. Okay, we got um, Ron. Who's, is, that, is that Hermione? Yeah, Hermione in her cool outfit. So we get, we got the gang in this set, the whole gang. We need a Lego Home Alone set. Are you, are you late to the news? <laughs> no, we're getting a Home Alone set. That's what we're talking about. Just we don't know when. Probably next year, late next year. So oh, Hermione has like a rubbery hair, and I think there is a new mold. Or maybe it's coming from the friends line. I don't know. It's really cool though. Oh, and she comes with a with a bow tie. 
Okay, that's gotta be new. I never seen her in that outfit. Very cool. Will it be out before Christmas or next? Uh, I'm sure it's not gonna be out by this year. Like, we have backlog from the past year for LEGO Ideas. So I'm sure nothing that was announced right now will come out this year, I'm certain. Maybe spring next year, or maybe summer next year, or maybe even um, fall next year. Don't expect anything that was just announced to come out. That is Hermione. Just check the box. Yep, Hermione. Oh, no, wait, sorry, you're right. Blah, you're absolutely right. That's Lavender Brown. They actually, they actually look very similar on the box. They actually look very similar. See? Hermione is the one on next to Harry. So that's Lavender. Thank you. They have, they both have the pink outfit. But yeah, I, I should have figured that Hermione never wore a bow tie. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Hermione never wore a bow tie. Okay. Wanna take a closer look? Yeah, so that's Lavender Brown. Really cool hair mold. It's, it's rubbery. Come on, focus. There you go. So it's squishy. But yeah, she has two face expressions, very cool outfit. What's that on her necklace? I don't remember what she had on her necklace, but that's gotta be something that the character wore in the movies. And and Ron. Nice shirt pattern. Overall, like the prints for the outfits are pretty cool this in this set. Really sweet. Oh, grumpy Ron. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I think that's race um, Star Wars race face, right? Yeah, that's definitely Ray from Star Wars. <laughs> Maybe she's secretly a wizard. Are you a wizard, Ray Skywalker? Okay. Do they have the same face? I don't think so. No, we're gonna see her money later on. But I don't think she has the same face. Does she? Um, very similar, but not the same. Hermione will have a bit of a different smirk. Oh, so that's Ron's temporary girlfriend. Oh, oh, because he was under the love potion. Man, it, it coming, it's coming back to me. Like, it's been a few years, but it's coming back to me. You're right. You guys are so much better at Harry Potter knowledge than I am. Honestly, I'm just waiting for my kids to grow up a bit more, so then I can introduce them to Harry Potter. Because, you know, there is some dark stuff in Harry Potter, so I don't want this to be too early of an introduction, but yeah. Once they are, like, old enough, maybe a year from now or something, uh, we will do, like, a family watching of Harry Potter for sure. And then I'm gonna if um, derustify all my knowledge. I mean, my, my older one wants to read the books so I think once she grows a bit more we're gonna purchase her all the books I think because she loves reading she, she reads a lot like a lot she reads more than me and my wife combined and we love books and she's only seven and she loves reading and she actually draws comics. She's she's pretty like into into written stuff and you know. Interesting. Uh would have never expected uh for Lego to use Ray's face in Harry Potter. Can you guys think of any other cases in licensed heads and parts being reused? Uh I can't have any I can't name any specific cases right now, but I think it was happening in the past. Are, your, are my kids going to inherit a very valuable LEGO collection? Eh, my collection is not that valuable, but yeah, they do play with it. For sure, like, I think it's, it should stay in the family, right? I'm not like Will Ferrell, you know, it's mine. 
No. I don't think when they, once they grow older and will appreciate, you know, what Lego really is more. I mean, they like Lego, but they don't know how much value it really holds as a, as a toy. Um, but yeah, like, I, I do share Lego with my kids. That's, that's why, like, some of these sets are in boxes, because they broke them. <laughs> but I don't, I don't mind that much. Honestly. I can get mad over it at like for five minutes, but then like whatever. Dark? Um where Harry Potter has her dark stuff, like there is death, there is dark magic, there is some scenes that are kind of disturbing. Come on, you guys know what I'm talking about. Like so, some scenes are disturbing. Especially those involving like Voldemort or Tom Riddle or some stories like the Cedric Death. There is stuff in Harry Potter that's dark, and I think that's too dark for some kids. So you have to be a certain age, I think, to read Harry Potter. I, I think it actually has some dark aspects to it. That's what I'm thinking. Do my kids like Marvel? Oh! If you say Spider-Man to my younger one, she goes nuts. She has like two Spider-Man shirts. I don't know why, but she just loves Spider-Man. And we played the Lego Marvel Super Heroes, and she played with me, like she's like three years old. But she, she only wanted me to play Spider-Man. But yeah, they know Marvel, they like Marvel. So, just because it's Spidey, you know. Why do kids love Spider-Man so much? I don't think Batman is ever getting that much love. Honestly. Reused faces happen all the time in superhero sets? Probably. I mean, again, I, I, I recall some instances of that, but I can't give specific examples right now. Like, you guys probably are better than me on this. My Lego from when I was a kid was the only thing uh, told my parents not to sell when I first moved out. Good call. Good call. Very good call. Hold on. Oh no, I think I'm good. Okay, I was like, is that a stud off? No, we're good. We're just building the base of the tower. Hey, Jeff, welcome, dude. Late night, join. How's how you doing, man? Thanks for joining. I would rather be Bruce Wayne than Peter Parker, just saying. True that. What would you guys like more? Superpowers? Or the money pile big enough to buy superpowers, sort of, like Batman, right? <laughs> I think Bruce Wayne has more enemies than Peter, technically speaking. And has more money, too, for sure. His name is Jeff! <laughs> In the Lego Batman games, I only play as Batman. You you mentioned Lego Batman games, so what do you, what else would you play as? <laughs> and in Fortnite, I always use Batman skin, so you gotta love Batman, I guess. <laughs> Batman. No, 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 no. That museum I went to, like the Peterson Museum, they have... They have the 1989 Batmobile. Man, that thing is awesome in person. They have the 1966 Batmobile, remember that one with the black lines, the sedan, that was in a Lego set in the uh, old school edition of the Batcave, that collectible. So they had that car in the museum, which is pretty awesome. They had the Bat, they had the bat pod from Dark Knight, that also was a collectible Lego set. And they had the Bat bike from the 1960s as well. So quite a few Batmobiles. I wish they had some sort of a bat wing or something, but that was cool. And they, they keep the, the 1989 Batmobile, they keep in sort of like a dark room with like limited lighting and it's very glossy. So it's look like a, looks like a million dollars, like it's really cool looking in that light setup they have. 
Very cool. It's it's really big. I think that's the same one they use in the movies. I have a feeling like I will make the UCS 60s Batmobile someday. Yeah, just like they did with the 1989 Batmobile. It's it's kind of iconic for sure. It really cool, lo looks cool in the person. Again, wait for that vlog of mine. It has everything. I'm gonna I shot everything. Okay, I have like 250 clips, 20 gigs of footage. It's gonna be a long vlog with not much talking. So basically a tour of the museum. That's what I did. Uh, I need one more one by three, please. I'm gonna other oh, this. Okay. Oh, sorry. I, I gotta switch this camera for now. It's. I think it's better. <laughs> I'm really excited to see this vlog. Yeah, give me a few days. I I I wanted to edit this today, but I have some work assignments. So. I, I, I focus on work first and then cool factor like that's my you know, that's the priority But yeah, it's gonna take me like probably a few hours to edit It's a lot of footage I have to go through so I want to get all the good takes and uh, There's not much of a story to that vlog honestly because I'm like I'm here in the museum and like watching all the cool cars and I was too excited to talk anything coherent to the camera honestly So you guys are gonna just see a guy drooling over a bunch of cars That's all it is honestly this vlog that's all it's gonna be. Just me drooling over a bunch of cars. Okay. Love those doorways. But if you guys if you guys like me drooling over a bunch of cars, then that's what you're gonna get. Just much not much story. It's like cyber truck and a lot of cars. Cyber truck and more cars. Cyber truck. Oh my god. That's all that was my entire day. A guy, a, a security guy that was like, so they had the cyber truck on display and they had like a line of people trying to see it up close, right? And they had social distancing in place and all the like, everybody had to have a mask, it's, you know, pandemic regulations. And there was a security guard just standing by the truck to make sure nobody was like touching it or like trying to like scratch it or anything like, because you, you were like, you were like super close to the truck. You were like half a meter, like it was just, it was bordered off. But you, you could touch it if you wanted to. But he, there was a, a guy trying to make sure that nobody touch, touches the truck. Um, and I was, and he saw me with the camera. I had my camera, my like tripod, my microphone, and he, he knew I was vlogging. And he saw me, he probably must have laughed his butt off because I was, I was walking around the truck and again, and again, and again, and always with the camera like, oh, you know. He must have laughed like, why is this guy all about this truck? I was like, I had like 50 different shots of the truck, I swear. Because I tried to like see all the details, like the, all the things, like if there's like a, some misalignment of the panels, if there's some like thing that I can see that nobody ever seen, like where the cameras are, how the wheels are working, if I can go in, take a peek inside the truck. So I, I was, I spent like an hour just like circling that truck and this guy was like, what is this guy doing? Just a truck, dude. Get over it, man. So yeah, that was fun. Hey, good night. Thanks for coming. I'm going to have to go. Bye. Okay, Brick Star Wars Boy. Thanks for joining, dude. I was building the coaster and I said I didn't have the track piece. Ooh, that's a big miss. Yeah, contact Lego about it. Like, I think they have pretty good policy on getting back to you with the missing piece. They're like, their customer service is second to none. It's really good. I'm a bit biased. I work for the company, okay? But yeah, every time a, per a customer of our Lego store called them, super chill, super helpful. Very good um, opinion on the Lego um, customer service. Oh, there's a jet flying very low and fast. Sometimes you can hear jets on the stream because I have my window open because it's really warm here in California right now. Um, even though I do have a fan working, which is like the bro is covering my fan inflow. I have like a little fan here. 
But yeah, the jets are sometimes having some intercept missions at night because I live close to a Marine Corps base. Cool. By oath, I'm gonna be heading out. Hey, thanks for uh, coming, Studio Brickton. No worries. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okie dokie 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 dokie. Hit that like button. Make sure you enjoy the stream. I I'm glad you guys came over. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Hey, no worries, dude. Take care, man. See you in the next one. What, what, what? <laughs> what are you shouting what? Okay, some sticker action. I, I forgot to show that. Yeah, this set does have stickers. Mostly about the uh, masonry. We gotta apply sticker number one. Right there and there. Hmm. What's the best for it to go? Well. Okay, this is good. Okay, I'm gonna take that one and the second one. Hey, Osirotus Ra, welcome back to the stream. Thanks for joining today, my friend. Sup, dude? Late night with Mike it is. Just hanging out, chilling, making sure our Monday finishes just right, or maybe your Tuesday begins just as right. Hey, klocki z zapałem. Michał, pozdrowienia z Polski. Witam w na streamie, bardzo miło. Polish viewer joining. Did I see you before? Widziałem cię wcześniej, chyba nie. Witam. Witam na moim kanale. I love Polish viewers coming in. You know, these late streams allow me to actually connect to Europe, as I mentioned so many times over. And that means Polish viewers. My heritage. <laughs> Pozdrawiam również. I think I'm gonna stop ex explaining what I said in Polish so you guys can figure it out. It's gonna be funny. What did he say? I like some of the older uh, Harry Potter sets compared to the new ones. Yeah, some of the older ones are still cool, dude. Welcome to the chat, by the way, Hillbilly Banjo Kid. Outsider, welcome. Just finished building the UCS Batmobile, what a beast. Mm. Envious. Dude, such a sweet set. Uh, do you have access to my Discord? Post some pics. I love this set. I wanna, I wanna really get it at some point. <laughs> it's like somewhere down the list. Pierwszy raz udało się wpaść na live, akurat w Polsce jest już starano. No widzisz, e, ostatnio tak sobie streamuję. Tak, znalazłem taki czas, żeby streamować wieczorami. Późnym wieczorem w Kalifornii, więc wtedy w Polsce ludzie mogą dołączyć. Witam, fajnie, fajnie cię widzieć. Zostaw suba. <laughs> Pozdrawiam. Mike, remember when, how I said since I'm a Bulgarian speaker, I can pick up some Polish? I think your Polish viewer said, hey, my greetings from Poland. Exactly. Yeah, he said greetings from Poland. And I, I just welcomed him because he's the first time here on the channel. Uh, first time catching my live stream, but I think he's watching my channel. Um, so I, I, I'm so happy that people can join because it's like 6 a.m. in Poland in the morning. Yeah, I wanna open this channel more for European viewers for sure, so that's why also... And since my streaming schedule allows me to stream more at this time of day, I think it's it's a win-win for me. And hopefully for my viewers as well. Hopefully. We can all enjoy the streams more together. Honestly, I don't see much of a change in viewership when I stream late night or normal times. Uh, and I think it kind of evens out. It's usually like 15-20 viewers. For my, you know, usual streaming. 
um, viewership. I kind of, you know, it's usual for like a channel with 6,000 subs, I think. If, you know, if like a half a person people join for the stream, that's kind of the usual, so I'm happy with that. Of course, the channel will grow. I hope to for more people to join uh, at some point in later, you know, later future. That'd be nice, but still, I do enjoy having like those more c personal connections with the um, people who watch me. <clears throat> the ultimate bridge battle, I retired, and I remember that some website had it and it was 200. Well, welcome to LEGO Collectibles world. Some sets, even the Marvel play sets, especially with the minifigures included, yeah, they get expensive real fast. Uh, where's the... I'm missing a piece. It's kind of a big one. Wait, did I use too much here? I'm missing the round two by two. Did it like roll over somewhere? Oh, yep. Found it. It just es tried to escape. No, 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 no. Nobody escapes my my build. I got it though. Nice. Super lecie już jakiś czas temu. Od razu jak zobaczyłem twój kanał, gdybyś miał kiedyś chwilę, zapraszam do siebie na kanał. Będziemy mi mega miło, gdy dasz znać. Co są jeszcze o moim kanale? Wiesz co, jak już tak siedzimy, to zajrz ci do ciebie teraz. I'm gonna take a look at his channel. Because uh, he said like he's a... I have to type your name. Muszę, muszę wklepać twoje imię, bo nie można już klikać na ludzi na streamie. Um, klocki z zapałem. Ja oglądam paru ludzi z Polski, bo dlatego Gika i Maćka i Klocki oglądam. No dobra, wiesz co, zostawię ci suba i później zajrzę, ok? Tak żebym pamiętał, także masz suba ode mnie. Dobra. I zajrzę jak będę miał chwilkę. Dzięki. Cool, I just sub to him. Yeah, like I, I do watch a few Polish channels, like I'm always on the lookout for some good Polish uh, Lego creators. Um, I was thinking about running a, a Polish channel, to be frank. I was really thinking about it, because I think my reviews are decent quality, and I think um, Poland still has place for, I don't know, good reviewers or people with experience. Um, but just the time I would need to make it happen successfully, it's on top of the cool factor and my work and beyond the brick. That is something I don't have time for. But maybe in the future, who knows? A spoko, moja mała przyjemność, cała przyjemność po mojej stronie. Zajrzę później do ciebie, dobra? Tylko nie ma chwilę. Scott, welcome. What shelf is that behind you? Oh, that's a new shelf, yes. So it's basically. I think it's called Fortino or Tortino? Fortino. It's like a a brand on Amazon that sh sells like really cheap shelves. This one's like 40 bucks and it's wooden with plastic poles and I needed like a shelf for some staging area for some sets I'm reviewing. This one right now is filled with a bunch of Harry Potter and I have some hidden side that I actually just finished video for Beyond the Brig uh, yesterday night. So there are some hidden side sets in there that you're gonna be seeing the video on Beyond the Brig in a few days. Um, but yeah, serves me well, it looks good on the stream background and my studio background and it's it's like a staging area so I can move sets here that are waiting for a review and I can move them back to other places when I'm finished. It's 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 something I needed for this mini studio. So yeah, it works pretty well for me. Yeah, check them out, it's like Fortino, F Fortino, Amazon. There are like several different types and colors, you can buy like, a, this one's the highest, you can buy a low one. It's, it's, the che it's cheaper than Ikea, honestly. It's very cheap for a shelf. Pretty good quality, too. <clears throat> hey, Rohan, welcome. People joining. I have the worst luck with picking and choosing what says to wait to buy. An example for the first Avengers Tower. That's why I never, I never usually jump on sets when they come out, like, immediately. 
I try not to do that. Get some potions and stuff. Very cool. It's gonna be some book too. So welcome Rohan to the chat. Thanks for joining. Coming in hot. People coming in hot. Okay, we got a bunch of tables to build. Oh, and that's the party, so that's probably just like some sort of like a refreshments, beverages, you know. Very colorful. I'm gonna uh, show you once I'm done with this, so you can see what details we have here. It's really cool, though. Ice cream in purple? Huh. I don't think I've ever seen that piece in purple. Interesting. And in green, for that matter. Very cool. Okay, so we got a bunch of things on both sides of the of the I don't know lobby, hallway, whatever that is. Oh yeah, these seem to be tables for sure. What do you think the next Lego Hogwarts expansion will be? I don't know if they're gonna make any sort of oh you mean like this expansion? Um, what do we have right now? The clock tower, we have the the Great Hall, um, that, that piece of, of the um, stonework with the Whomping Willow. Um, we have this. Anything else? Maybe the, the West Wing with the tainted windows. Do we have that? Or the bridge? Nah, not really. Hmm, I don't know. Good question. The aqueduct? I mean, the bridge, the aqueduct, maybe? No, I don't think that's gonna work. I don't know, good question. Uh, I just try, I'm just like, memo uh, trying to like, imagine the, the Hogwarts uh, collectible set and what's in Hogwarts actually. Hey, Sean, evening, welcome. But I think the next UCS set from like UCS, you know, collectible um, from direct to consumer line will be the uh, rumored Diagon Diagon Alley. That would be sweet, don't you guys think? That would be amazing. Okay, we got some book. Oh, the potions book. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, so that's the potions class. I, I thought it was a party. So. <laughs> Yeah, let's drink potions on party. I mean, you know, potions. High percentage potions. Um, but yeah, it seems like we're having a, a potions class, of course. Uh, kind of can't it? Okay, I, I go with that. Okay, so the book just stays there. And is that it? Yeah, bug two is done. So let me show you what we have so far. I gotta figure out like, okay, so I did set up my shortcuts for the camera switching. So let me see if I remember them. It might mess up the stream, but hold, hold on. Okay, so that's the host shot. That's, oh, that's this, oh, F17. Okay, perfect. Okay, so what we have, but I think I don't have the shortcut for the new scene, so I have to click it still. I gotta get the stream deck thing at some point. Um, yeah, small, Room, but okay, so there's the entryway, masonry work, it's actually pretty cool looking. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it that way. Um, and yeah, we have two tables with potions for students to sit through and to sit on, and we have the mini potions uh, workbook or just a recipe book. There's a sticker, and there's a sticker in the front, so no prints so far. And the potions, like, as I mentioned, like, we have the, the purple ice cream, the lime green ice cream piece. We have the transparent blue and red uh, brick heads. Brick, did I say brick heads? Minifigure heads. Uh, and some transparent um, blue and yellow barrels as well. So, yeah, pretty colorful, pretty sweet, pretty cute, pretty nice. Okay. Any Marvel sets you plan on getting this July? Um, Sean, I think nothing really comes clearly in the US out. Some people are getting them at Target, but nothing really official. 
I, will, I wanted that Iron Man bust, I wanted Avengers Tower, I want the Heli Carrier. But I don't think I have the budget for those right now. We'll see. The Heli Carrier is tempting though. Wait, I didn't know that Dagon Alley was rumored to be a UCS set again. Um, I mean, I mean, you know, you know, like you had the big Dagon Alley, yeah. So I think they're gonna make a remake, but that's that's still a rumor, so nothing really confirmed at this point. Nothing really official. See, another one. They try to escape. Maybe I, my table is not leveled. Maybe that's why. There is nine? Nine what? Oh, I know this. I've talked about, did you hear about the f new Five Nights at Freddy's 9? No, I don't really play these games or know much about this lore. Honestly. So what is Five Nights at Freddy's? Is it mostly like a toy line or is it like a horror lore? What is it? Mostly. I know it's everything at some point, but like... How did it originate? Like an um, animated show or a toy line? I've never got into this, like I have no idea. I just know Markiplier plays some Five Nights at Freddy's games, but that's all I know. Ooh, fancy. Get the... Um, How do you call this thing? Uh, chandelier with candles and stuff. I really don't like the direction Marvel and DC Lego sets went in 2019. They started making them much more simple to appeal to the younger crowd. Hey, seems like you're talking about Lego City. <laughs> but that is true. I mean, you know, with the popularity of, of Marvel movies, majority of the audience is basically kids right now. Marvel is not like a nerdy adult comic book collector thing anymore. Those times are gone. So yeah, Lego apparently is following their audience. Lego is following their target market. So City and Marvel are becoming one. Appealing to not necessarily you, because it's for kids mostly. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people are, are getting Marvel sets just for the minifigures. They don't hold that much of a display or collectible value with some exceptions like the you know the marvel iron man bust or some bigger sets like the ultimate collector series hogbuster or some certain like i don't know like milano or quinjet sets which are cool but the, yeah the new ones are very kiddified childified childish slightly yeah i i get what you're saying like it's true unfortunately but yeah lego is lego is following the numbers what the parents are buying right so yeah Kids love Spider-Man, man. So you make cute Spider-Man sets with tons of vehicles, and even Venom has vehicles now. So, you know what, what I'm saying. It's it's where the money is for LEGO. And you got, we gotta accept that fact. Just We gotta enjoy the minifigures more, I think, at this point. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a trend that's that's been happening for a while now. For sure. Lego had a sale? 23% off the Falcon, 25% off Assembly Square, what? Are you guys... how did I miss that? Is it still on? I mean... I can... I promised myself not to buy any... any sets in the meantime for now. Gotta save some money. Gotta be saving some money, man. Okay. <laughs> Was it on Lego.com? 
I remember the city sets from 2019 that had much more realism than the newer ones they've been making. There are some exceptions, but the vast majority use specialized parts. Yeah, C city is undergoing the same um, trans, you know, trans configuration, like transition, whatever you call it. Uh, as the Marvel, so it's it's more for yeah, kid. I mean, city was always for for kids basically you know but it yeah they were more it seemed like city was more for everybody than just for kids i think that's what that what how it was for years and yeah it seems like i mean for good example like you know relevant example like the new city elite police sets you guys see those the three sets that are coming that were like surprisingly right now announced for summer wave and each of these is like a 20 dollar set and they all seem like Blah, so generic, so simple, but kids will love them because it's like special police, elite police, simple to build vehicles, you know, it's more of like a 4 plus set at this point, but it's not, it has nothing that an adult like me would buy, for example, right? But I mean, I don't blame Lego, that's just how it is. Bye Mike, gotta go to bed, would have to love to stay long, longer, great stream, thank you, before the break films, have, uh, have a good night, thanks for coming. Yeah, whiskey shot is, is from Australia. For sure. Nie wiem, czy ktoś już o to pytał, ale jaki jest twój ulubiony set z serii o Harem? Klocki, I'm gonna answer in Polish for him. He asked like my favorite Harry Potter set. Ale pytasz o zestawy z tej serii, czy ogólnie? Bo wiesz co, ja nie mam zestawu z poprzednich serii, jakoś tak nie udało mi się ich zdobyć o czasie. Znaczy re recenzowałem je na Brick Vault, ale, ale nie kupowałem, a z tej serii to jest The Burrow, który jest tutaj na stole. Ciągle mi się najbardziej podoba. Znaczy zobaczymy jak ten wyjdzie, ale The Burrow zdecydowanie, czyli ta Nora Weasleyów. You like my Polish guys? <laughs> It's gonna be more because we have Polish people joining, and I I think I uh, I'm I'm appreciating them a lot, and I want to answer in Polish whenever I can. I just said that my the bureau is kind of my favorite so far, but we'll see how this one works. But I think this set gets more value as you connect it to the other ones. I do not have the other ones, so it doesn't have much value for me in that matter. Um, so I'm gonna have to just assume the likes of the set just by the set whereas the burrow really defends itself as a standalone you know Nora is super no ja te zestawy ściągałem z Polski z Warszawy w ogóle od kolegi z, ze sklepu Lego że było zabawnie bo ty nie możesz kupić ich w Stanach musiałem je ściągnąć zapłaciłem chyba 100 dolarów ponad cenę żeby je ściągnąć tutaj ale już dobra <laughs> love to hear all sorts of language <laughs> okay yeah, I'm just conversing with a Polish viewer right now. He's like, just chatting. It's kind of cool for me because I don't, I honestly, I use Polish at home only when I talk to my wife or my kids. My every, everything else in my life is, is English because I work in an English comp American company. I do an English channel. I edit in English. So it's kind of nice to use Polish while working. It's very rare for me, so kind of cool. I, I, you know, I, I try to, of course, keep my Polish. Of course, I, I, I never want to forget the language because I know some people who who emigrate and move to the U.S. and they switch their entire surroundings to English-speaking people. Um, well, you you can get like an accent on your Polish speaking. You can get like forget some words. I don't want to be that person. Certainly, do not want to forget my Polish heritage. I love whenever Mike speaks in Polish. It sounds weird, right? Like, it's like a friend, you know. I have a friend who is Spanish, or I mean, he's, he's Mexican born, but he's been born, I mean, he's, he's, sorry, Mexican descent, but he was born in US and he has perfect English, like, you know, American English, he was born in the language, but he's fluent in Spanish. And, you know, we converse, we like, 
uh, speaking English and like he picks up a phone from his mom or something and like Hola madre <laughs> And it's like oh you sound so different <laughs> When you speak fluent Spanish So I guess it's kind of the same feeling right when I like immediately switch to Polish and I, I go fluent Polish It must sound weird to you Can I read your comment? Can I read your comment? I read two of those. What's the other one? I read your comment and I have no idea what you're talking about. So it's kind of weird. Very weird comment. I don't think I'm gonna read it out loud. <laughs> Are you going, Arman? Thanks for coming. Thank you so much for coming, dude. I'm sorry I did not do any Discord tonight, but usually tonight, uh, like late night, I think I'm gonna keep it uh, without Discord. But yeah, we're gonna use Discord at some point in other streams for sure, again. Because I do enjoy it quite a bit. Alright, so we're building... Okay, so, oh, so I have to, like, oh, interesting, that's the way it goes. Hmm, very cool building technique for the rooftop. It's, like, slides in and it's being held by those two. I can understand the difficulties um, in keeping your native language uh, in an English-speaking country. I stutter now when I speak my language and my elders find it hard to understand me. What's your native language, Sean? Because I think, like, you know, my, we are here as a family, so we speak Polish at home and we have Polish friends, so it's kind of easy to cultivate the language. Uh, I don't have the incentive to really forget it or anything like that. But even like when I speak to my parents back in Poland or my friends, they say like, you sound kind of American and like they kind of can tell that even though I do have accent, I do have Polish accent when I speak English and they can tell that I have American accent when I speak Polish, which is like, I don't see I have any American accent when I speak Polish, but they kind of can sense it because like I, you know, some friends I don't see for like a year or so and I speak to them after and like, you sound like you've been using English a lot and like, okay, maybe, I don't know. Can you tell? And they can tell, they can tell me, like, yeah, you sound American, like, oh, wow. Whereas people here ask me, like, where's your accent from? <laughs> I don't sound American at all to them. Whereas I sound American to my Polish friends, which is weird. I guess it's just something that happens over time and I just don't notice it. Have to go for a while, cheers, Mike. Sure, whiskey. Um, thanks for coming, as always, dude. Um... Stay safe and not be awesome. Jeff. Hey, if you like what you see about coming to Mike's Patreon support, let's him grow the channel. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. And you're linking my Patreon. I think it's easier to like link the Patreon, but my Patreon is like actually there. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. Like Jeff is my Patreon as well. So I, I use Patreon um, just for simple support. Um, really just like few fans from Patreon allow me to like pay the bills like um, the music I use or just you know my um, any software or any upgrades that's really helpful so thank you Jeff for mentioning that appreciate it very much so dude yeah I do have like a one dollar tier which is amazing for you guys just to spend one dollar for me a month that's amazing uh, I have a five dollar one but I have a few people like on a two dollar tier thank you so much guys yeah it's mostly to keep uh, keep this channel going. And I think actually, oh, that's a good thing to mention, but I, I think YouTube allowed me to do spons uh, sp um, sponsorships on the channel. Like, oh, sorry, memberships. So you guys see some, some channels where you like click join, it's like subscribe or join. And by joining, it's like Patreon. It's like a monthly fee, like on Twitch. So YouTube allows that, and I think my channel got it enabled now, which is cool. I should try it. Um, basically, it's like 
a monthly subscription like on Twitch and I, I, I have to like prepare emojis for you and something like so you can use on the live streams. Uh, I gotta look into that. I think some other LEGO YouTubers enabled it and it's a really cool way to support people without, if you don't want to use Super Chat, I think memberships are much more easy to use. Maybe I should look into that. So thanks to YouTube, I guess, for enabling this for my channel. But I just, I just, I have to prepare the emojis and like few perks so you guys can, can use it. So maybe I can um, use that more than Patreon, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I gotta find a ways to like, because um, people keep asking me like, hey, can I support this and that? And like, I think people are, don't want to use Super Chat as much or something. And uh, I don't want to ask for donations at all. Because that's very optional. But I think people were asking like, hey, do you have any like support ways? I'm like, yeah, I think memberships might be a cool thing on YouTube. I gotta try it out. So yeah, all the support that you guys are giving me is like fantastic. So thank you. Really, like I never ask for anything else than just like a simple support. Even just watching videos, honestly, it's just, I see the numbers growing and it's just so encouraging. Um, one more, one more, one more. Where's the last one? Come on, show yourself. Oh my God, what are they doing? The kids are just, ah! They have this tendency when my kids, before they go to sleep, um, they just go crazy. Like they try to like kill all the energy they build up over the day. I don't know. So weird. Okay, I'm missing one. It's gotta be here somewhere, right? Oh, there it is. Bye, Rain. Thanks for coming. I linked someone's Patreon. <laughs> oh well. Oh well. You can remove the link because you're a mod. You can always remove your comment. I think it's important for immigrants in the US to remember how to speak their native language. If that is that what makes the US melting pot of culture, it wouldn't be so fun if we all spoke English. Yeah, different accents like I have a ton of friends from Europe or other countries because in San Diego I live in a pretty much very international um, district with uh, the universities close by and people are coming and going for all the countries. A lot of my friends are like from many, many countries. Um, so even San Diego as a, as a city is very international for some reason. Which is cool. I do, I do like that fact. It was your Patreon mic, I was just being a bad... <laughs> ah, Jeff. Good old Jeff. Good old Jeff, man. I, I, I gotta figure out a way to detect when you mess with me. You're still pretty good at it, but I have to find a way to to detect when you're messing with me. You're pretty good at this, man. You're pretty good at this. I, I always fall for this. <laughs> Super chats? Super chats are nice. I have a link in to my Streamlabs below in that... Um, in that scl scrolling bar. Streamlabs is cool because it doesn't take away any commission um, like the Super Chat does. So say, I think with Super Chat, you send me like $5 and I get like $4 or like three seventy, because YouTube takes their cut. And I think when you do it with Streamlabs, that link, you only pay, like I only pay because you send me whatever and I, I get that amount minus like I don't know, like 2% of PayPal fees and that's it. So it's really much more like from my perspective, it's much more uh, beneficial if you want to support me uh, to use Streamlabs just because I get more of that money instead of YouTube getting that money. That's that's the, the weird part. Oh, wait, what am I doing? Oh, OK, this what? Oh, this way. Okay. I was like, what am I? So cool. So there's a lot of studs on the side techniques here, which makes this look kind of interesting facade. I want to see the end result. Hey, I'm back. Welcome back, dude. Partial Studios. When I'm promoting you, it's always serious. I won't mess that up. 
bro, bro, bro. Thank you. How is your channel doing, Jeff? I'm sorry, I did not really see much activity on YouTube lately because I wasn't really uh, watching many YouTubers lately as of past weekend or week. I was focusing on other things, but did you upload anything new? Did you get anything new done? I'm uh, just, just asking, wondering. Jeff. Am I gonna get the Batman superhero semi-truck? I don't know, honestly. I'm trying to like kind of freeze all the new set purchases for now. Um, but we'll see, I have so much, I have a bit of a backlog of work. And I, have, I think I have like two more Harry Potter sets to do and stuff like that. So I'm not rushing anything yet when buying new sets now. Um, honestly, not much into that track. But I uh, I want to check it out just to see. I saw Jung's review and I think that's a great value set. Seems like one. Hello, Sokal Bricks. Hey, Asol, how you doing, man? Late night, welcome. Asol is a friend here from Southern California. He has a really cool channel, Sokal Bricks, so check it out. He's growing as well. I was in your stream, uh, Asol, for a second, but I don't think you, you saw that on YouTube. Thanks for coming, dude. Late night, I know. It's quiet, I, I've been focusing on getting some work in, editing-wise, and people want commissions again from me. Nice! So, see? That's what I'm saying, when you do something that you're good at and passionate about, people will come for other types of business to do with you. Which is nice, like... I... I actually, I can say that I earned money th through this channel and not even associated with this channel, like, because people found me and wanted something. And I did for them, and I got paid, and, you know, so you never know what, where, where your hobby might bring you. Actually, my LEGO hobby and editing, just making videos, um, allowed me to, to get the job that I work at right now, because it was my portfolio. So if I, if I never really, like, focused on keep making LEGO videos, and keeping making LEGO videos, I wouldn't get a job, for example. So you never know. Always give your 150% when you're committing to a hobby or anything you do in your life. My phone is at 1% so it was fun on the stream, so bye. Okay, see you man. Charge your phone. Um, have a good one. I've been building and I've been paying attention to Instagram. Maniac for Bricks and I worked on a collab. I'll be posting the picture pretty soon. Nice! See, so collab's happening, that's cool. <clears throat> Might do a live stream on the 4th? Yeah, I think I'm gonna take the weekend off for the 4th. I wanna like, have some sort of vacation, but there's not much... <clears throat> there's not not many places to go in the pandemic. So I, I wanna keep it safe and simple, so I, I think I'm just gonna take a weekend off and enjoy time with the family. No, maybe do something fun, maybe go do a picnic in the mountains or something. We'll see. Something to not sit on the computer all day. For sure, that's for sure. I mean, sitting at the computer and building Lego set is not bad. Just editing and spending time on work is bad. Sometimes too much. I did, thanks, glad to see you're doing well. Hey, so yeah. Hopefully this whole thing blows over soon so we can get a coffee or something together finally. Soon enough. The commission work has paid our rent for the next two months. Wow! Wow, dude, that's that's significant. That's a lot of... It's really good. Hey, Simonk, thanks for subbing. Are you in the stream? Thank you. Appreciate it. That's a lot of commission work. Good stuff, dude. Pay yeah, that's a lot. Of, seems like a lot of money. Congratulations on that. So see, w uh, can you can you say what what you commissioned, what builds, or is it like client confidential? 
Hey, Andrew, welcome to the chat. Thanks for joining, dude. I gotta fix my glasses because, like, you see, those are my prescription glasses. Usually you see me in my work glasses, but I left them at work, which I gotta pick up tomorrow uh, since last week. Um, these are my prescription glasses, but it, I, I work for an eyewear company and I wear glasses like this. I think I'm gonna go to the guys tomorrow and, like, get them fixed because I think I just have to, like, fix my temples. I don't wear these glasses much often lately, but... They have blue filters, so it's good for computer work too, since I lost the other ones. I mean, not lost, lost, but forgot. Thanks, for Andrew, for joining. Don't forget to book the exchange rate if you're from other country. Yeah, sometimes the exchange rate when you uh, donate from like other countries, like I think PayPal has some weird rates sometimes, but it's overall pretty, pretty consistent with what you would get in a bank usually, I think. It's not too bad. Um, whoops. I want to check out people's channels, but you don't remove the checkout channel option on live stream. I know, Apprentice Bruce, that's super dumb. Like I've been saying this since this that change happened. So before, back in like two months back, you were able to be on a live stream like you guys are in the chat and click on like Jeff or Andrew or, or you Apprentice or Sokal, like click on the name and like go to channel. You can't do that anymore. Like even I, as an owner of the stream and even the mods, you can only like click on somebody and like, you know, remove people from the chat or like whatever, but you can't you can't click on person and see their channel. Like, how stupid is that? Like, why is that removed? That was like the best way to get, like, to see what people do because right now you have to like, oh, your name is Partial Studios. Okay, let me type you in on YouTube and you go to some other channel on the same name and you don't know if that's the same guy. It's come on, YouTube. I that was like very used function. I. I went to streams and I've seen some cool like YouTubers or like people saying, hey, I did this on my channel, like I checked them out, you know, I, I've been doing this all the time. So YouTube removed that, like whatever, it, it sucks. Yeah, Jeff, I know you're a, good, yeah, you're a good builder. I've seen your builds on that new Patreon channel I made. Yeah, pretty good stuff. How do you find commission work? Do you go like online or do people find you? Enjoying things, have a few ideas, build off, uh, working on, send you some pictures. As always, you can share the uh, pics on the um, Discord. Was on my Xbox for 12 hours straight. <laughs> oh, 1989 Batmobile. Thank you, uh, Sokal. Yeah, so Esol here uh, t told me like he can borrow me some sets for reviewing. I shall use that um, offer um, for sure, because I really want to review that one, for example, but... Uh, I don't even have space to own it or the money right now. So thank you, dude. We're gonna we're gonna catch together soon. One guy wanted the Galactica and base ship. Another guy wanted Babylon Five. Some Star Furies, micro scale. Some other things that I had to sign for casino or two. Oh, casino or two in the area might have some models. That's interesting. Really cool. Nice. Our troops channel. Cool. Friends of friends. It's always like word of mouth. It's the best recognition, right? I live down the street from YouTube HQ. I'm happy to go there and complain. Hey, do that. Can, 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 can we send Red Brick Redemption to go to YouTube? Like, knock, knock on the door. Like, hey, guys, can you please make it clickable for people to see other people's channels on the live chat? Thank you. It was a function, so it's not they can say, no, we can't do it. Because they used to have it. Okay? Can, can they at least say why it was removed? Okay, so just want to show you. We are at bug three. So that's bug number tres. Oops. I'm just gonna move the camera this way. Okay, sorry, it's a bit shaky. So we got the towers. And we got the... Um, the thingy here, yeah, looks pretty sweet. Okay, I'm just gonna move the camera just like a bit. Down. Okay, 
Yeah, so that's bug three. We should be able to go to bug number four right now. Out of six. I got you. Oh, really? <laughs> Please don't, YouTube is very like, they have a very light ban hammer, like if you complain too much, they can ban you, I don't know. I'm scared now. No, just kidding, but all I'm saying is that YouTube is a bit weird when listening to requests. I don't know, sometimes they do things right, sometimes they just don't listen to people. I think a lot of people are really asking for some features to come back, some, some features to appear. Uh, it's kind of weird, right? Yeah, there, are, there, there were some dumb things, you know, that YouTube did in the past. Copa thingy, you know... A lot of things. Hermione, so that's Hermione, by the way. She's very... I'm gonna show you how... How close she looks to... Ooh, she has silver... Pr oh, wow. That, yeah, great leg printing. Let me show you. Who's that guy? Is that just the waiter? What? No, the waiters do not have... ...wands, right? I mean, it's Hogwarts. <laughs> I just called Neville a waiter. My, why is my nose so tickling? Every time it happens those on the streams, every time. So I called uh, Neville, remember his outfit when he like, really like suited up for that, for that uh, party? And he has even his like gap between the teeth, that's cool. Oh, nice printing. Okay, I love Neville minifigure, let me show you. Uh, where's his wand? Okay, I gotta get his wand. <laughs> they are a multi-billion dollar company. Yeah, that's the problem, because they, they can, truth, truth being told, they can do whatever is working for them, for the business, right? Okay, so let me show you comparison to Hermione and... Um, uh, okay, oops. Alright, so you can see um, that's Lavender and that's Hermione. Check out that print. See, silver shoes. Like she's full on party dress. Very cool printing overall. She has a second face expression. Very nice. And Neville. I called him a waiter, like the the a bit glossy hair mold. You can see the the gap between the teeth. Very Neville like, and I like that that dollar sign, whatever that is. I remember. I think he he really suited up for this, and uh, he even has the the white gloves. He looks like a waiter to me, for sure. Um. Currently working on the story for my comic called Mo the Alien. Any cool ideas for it? Chat, go wild with the creativity. I have no idea. You should ask my daughter. She she writes comics lately and, and um, draws comics lately like crazy. Maybe she can help you. Wait, he looks like a waiter and he even has a a waiter's. Delivery device. I forgot how it's called. <laughs> so, yeah, he totally looks like a waiter. Isn't he? Totally. Oh, and it's building the fondue fountain. Very cool. Copa rules were stupid because they were the ones who were not following the origin of the sewer, so they just dumped it into creators. Yes, Brickman, absolutely right. I did a bit of an emotional video back when the Copa was a threat to all of us, but I think they kind of like stepped down from 
really like nailing down the Lego channels, so that's why we still exist. Um, but yes, the copper rules were very scary to read through, and it's true that YouTube messed up, and then they basically blamed everybody but not them, and tried to impose the the changes on everybody but not themselves and all the fines and everything so yeah that was the the reason behind the the outrage okay very cool don't ask people to be creative for you do it yourself hey i'm building a lego set i'm busy i'm Plus, I'm pretty bad at thinking about stories for comic books. So maybe you guys are better than this. Than me. <laughs> no, seriously, like, if I if I had to write a story for a book or a comic, I would be terrible at this. Hey, I can vlog, but I can't make, I can't make stories that much. That table is so cool. The cloth build. Some of the retro toys folks I watch got hit with copper too. That they had to jump through hoops, start cursing, and just change things a bit. But you see, like I don't know, like Jang. The only thing he changed, and he was, he was like the biggest Lego channel to be scared of copper, right? And the only real thing he did change is just he started appearing on his video, so it's not only his hands anymore. And he just started talking like, uh, you know, appearing and talking like he always used to talk, but showing himself um, on the on, on his videos, I think that alone really shielded him from Coppa. So people like me who show up and like we don't talk like we are not type of hey kids look at this da, 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 and there is a clown appearing and you know we're not like nursery song channels or any like weirdo kids channels whatsoever so i think we're good and it just all, all you need to have right now is to to have a normal sounding channel and you're safe from that and i think that's what works for for jang for me we, we have no issues with Coppa. I want to keep it that way, please. Yeah. But I think still, like, for example, Beyond the Brick, by, by the way, the, the, the poop pieces that, you know, I call them the poop pieces because... So you can kind of tell it's for kids because there is nobody to dif differentiate it. Like, there is no adult talking. I think that's the case. Lol, my go to sleep. Hey, brother from another break. Welcome, dude. Yes, I'm doing late night streams lately. So this is one of them. It's uh, t oh, pff, what? 10 p.m. Oops. I mean, I think I'm going to finish this set anyway. That's why it's called late night stream. And I, I, I have time reserved until I finish. So we're good. And only like two bugs away. So I think we're good. The build goes pretty fast, actually. And I love the build for that. This is amazing, honestly. Is that it? Okay. Check this out. So we have the fondue fountain, the poop pieces for chocolate, uh, ice cream, whatever. We got cakes and waffles. And I like how they build the cloth piece. See? It's a standalone piece, so it stays like uh, just away from the building. But that inverted um, dishes and the fountain looks amazing. Super, super good looking. Really enjoyed this one, this build. So thanks for joining, brother. Brother Brick, appreciate you, man. It's always fun to see people joining that late. 12 a.m. Whoop. I ordered a bunch of the 2020 Harry Potter sets from Germany on the second, and I'm still waiting. Whoa. Yeah, the only way I got them quite fast was my brother basically went to my sibling brother. He went to the Polish Lego store that had them. 
but bought all of them and sent them to me like uh, via international courier service in, you know the same week so that was the only way to get them I kind of overpaid but but still I, I, I just wanted this set so bad I don't think I'm gonna pull a stunt like this uh, often it's just way too pricey delicious yeah I know right the, the funnel looks amazing super cool and delicious Okay, we're building the upper floors of the tower right now, I believe. I believe, I believe. Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much guys for joining that late, I appreciate you very much. People hanging out, chilling. It's funny because... <laughs> I stream, I build a Lego set, I chat with you, and I have a Twitch stream running on my on my <laughs> screen uh, of a guy that I watch um, playing StarCraft 2, uh, Winter Gaming, he's a really cool Twitch streamer. So it's like streamception. It's funny. I, I have a few streamers on Twitch that I enjoy watching, he's one of them. Maybe that's why I had lags. Maybe that's why. <laughs> because I was watching a stream while streaming. Maybe I'm not supposed to do that. Maybe that was the case. Who knows? Because I had some lags in the beginning. Maybe that was the issue. I didn't think of that. There you go. Okay. So, building the, the main tower. Uh, area. One AM. You guys are crazy, but at the same time, I'm crazy for streaming that late. But I do enjoy it. I think the most, actually. It's very fun. Again, I think I, I, I said it many times over that it's it's kind of my way to wind down. Um, I mean, it just passed the weekend, but you know, I think every work day requires sort of like a chill time, you know. And for me, it's either, you know, if I'm not gaming or, I, I mean, I like to edit at night, but sometimes editing is work, right? So other two ways I, I chill is either to build a Lego set and, you know, stream it at the same time. Um, and I think that's that's this. You know, Monday work was done and stuff was good, but it's it's good to chill back and wind down and relax. You know, I think just chill back and relax. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that was loud. <laughs> smiley face, lurking smiley face. I'm sorry if I was too loud for everybody, but oh my head was just blew my head. <laughs> Party time! Did you like my new um, uh, new animation for donations? <laughs> party office, office party. Thank you so much, Arman, for the two seventy nine Canadian. I appreciate you, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Just lurking. Ah, you're always lurking, dude. Thank you so much for the support. That was loud. I think I should make it like a bit. Less loud. <laughs> Sorry, headphones users. But I really jumped. Now people will like donate to see how, how scary I c it can get. I mean, I did not see the donation on the chat because I wasn't looking, so I just heard the sound. Like, ah! <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. As always, much, much love for the support. It goes back. To keep going on this channel, right? People going to bed? 
yeah you guys get some sleep like sleep is not overrated it's actually very good for you so go to sleep enjoy your night thank you so much for joining um yeah jeff my pleasure that was the best reaction i know people will now donate just to see me jump <laughs> it's funny i already said from germany as well took about a week to get in the us not bad yeah for me it took like three days i think from poland Gotta go to bed. Brickman, thanks for joining, dude. Thanks so much, guys, for coming in and coming out. Yeah, you take some sleep. I mean, I chill even if nobody's watching. So I, I'm fine even, like, one person watching. Like, it's actually my way to to chill down. And, you know, I, I still wanted to build this set because I want to review it and everything. So, thank you so much for joining anyway and hanging out with me. in a, On a lonely night like this. You know, it's my way. It's like, put some music on, get some lights up, get the stream running, and just sail away into the Lego Harry Potter. <clears throat> I still have to figure out which days are the best for streaming at, on a weekday. I think Mondays will not be the best day, honestly, because people kind of like you know after the weekend so they kind of want to get some sleep after the first day of work and stuff like that so i think maybe tuesdays or wednesdays for streaming regularly uh maybe i should do another poll like what's the what's the best day for streaming mondays are kind of cool because it's easy for me to find time on mondays but i can see also like other days being good again i don't want to take away weekends for streaming maybe maybe weekend even evenings from time to time but I don't think I wanna uh, commit to weekend daytime streams. It's just, yeah, it's too much for me. I have so many other things I wanna do on the weekend, honestly. It's usually it's the only family time we have, so if I take that, if I take that away, uh, nah, not the best choice. Oh, dude, you're building the Lambo? Woo! That is my dream set for now. Yeah, I really want it. If I ever buy it, like, I think I'm gonna stream it. It's gonna be crazy of a challenge, but hey. How far are you in? I heard it's very challenging. How far are you in the set? Super jealous. Super jelly, man. Super jelly. Somebody, somebody also mentioned that they they just finished the Batmobile, the 1989 Batmobile, and I'm like, I'm double jelly right now. I am. Those are the two sets I really want. Triple jelly. Quadruple jelly. I heard the first bags are crazy because of the transmission build. Is that true? That the transmission build is just nuts. I like this music. Very much so. Box 2 out of 6. Really hope to, uh, don't make any mistakes. It's my first technique ever. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> did, you, did you get the Lambo to build your first technique set ever? That's some... Um, courage. <laughs> enjoy dude like but yeah once i think if you build the lambo nothing else will really surprise you in technic maybe if you get uh, a liber uh, 9800 uh, excavator at some point but that is impressive for a first lego technic set what what made you buy it just the love for the car or the hype around it or wh what made you buy it if you're not into technic sets I'm just asking, like, out of curiosity. It, it, it's huge to decide upon your first Technic set being the flagship of best set in years, probably, from Technic. Love the build, by the way, for that uh, lantern tree. Like, whatever that is. 
beautiful, right? And these pieces are coming from this Chinese uh, Chinese Lunar Year sets, right? So they, they are now used in Harry Potter, which is awesome. Very cool. Do I still have the Lego sets you grew up with a kid, uh, as a kid? Yeah, uh, I mean, not intact because they are in some random boxes on my parents, in my parents attic in Poland, Polish or, or Polish home. Uh, but I'm certain like if I ever go back to Poland to visit, I may spend a day or a weekend just trying to find the Emtron uh, magnetizer set because I still have that one. I have a bunch of Ice Planet. I'm sure they're like sealed off, excuse me, sealed off in some boxes on my on the attic. So technically I do have them. I never got rid of them. And I think my brother also played with them, but he put them back in the boxes when he grew up. Or my mom put them back in the boxes, so I think the, probably the old manuals, maybe the old boxes, flattened, are still there. Most likely, most pieces should be there too. When I ever, if when I get back to Poland for like a longer trip, I'm gonna take a weekend to dive into um, my old childhood Lego, and I'm sure as heck I'm gonna have my camera with it to vlog about it, for sure. So yeah, it's, they're waiting for me in the attic of, my, of our Polish house. Yeah, my mom never got rid of them. So I I thank for that. Okay, that's back four is done so. Believe so. Back five. First second set was a zero one. That's a nice set to get, like an easy one, right? I love how he can see the transmission working on the Lambo like unlike the Porsche and Bugatti. Yeah, because they excuse me, they specifically opened up the the bottom of the car so that you see how the gears are shifting. Whereas in the Bugatti you build the the transmission and it's get it gets sealed off, so you never see it again. That's <laughs> so it's stupid. But yeah, it's a model, so it's kind of kind of cool to see it, right? It's like okay, you build it now, seal it off, and you never see it again. So people don't even know what's inside. Yeah, it's cool that they actually do it in the Lambo. I don't think the gearbox transmission has been that bad. Really, the color of the car stood out for me, and I liked that the engine and gears uh, could be seen working. Yeah, dude. I'm gonna get that set at some point. Pasha, Pasha. Wanna play because I like the minifigures in the set, so I wanna keep them intact. Okay. Bag number five out of six. Gonna move some stuff here. So? Okay, no worries. What? You can help mom as uh, mom help you finding the. Okay, she she was looking for pajamas. <clears throat> Two of the characters in the comic are named Mike and Jeff. <laughs> Am I becoming a comic book character? I want to see the comic once you're done. Promise? <laughs> Three and a half hours. My stream sound the build, nice. So the Falcon, yeah, I think for me the Falcon was also the longest build. It was crazy. Very crazy. Oliver, welcome to the chat. Quick question from you, I see. Harley Davidson Fatboy or, or Fiat 500? I do have both in the other room. Um, actually, the Fiat 500 was broken by my kids. But, huh. Good question. 
It's a v both are very different sets. Very different. A bike and a car. Oh man, which I... Ah, my nose is just killing me right now. Just I ickling. Um... I'm gonna say I like the Fiat 500 more. Harley was cool, but there was just something cute about the 500 that I, I think I enjoyed building the 500 more than the Harley. So I'm gonna go with the Fiat. Very different sets for the very similar price tag. I get that, but it's so hard to choose between them. Like depending on what you like more, bikes or cars, you know. It's yeah. But, uh, I mean, I, don't, I would say you can't go wrong with either, I think. You can't really go wrong with either of these. Just go with your gut, man. Just think, feel what you like more. I think they have very similar value. Oh, wait, so, no, wait. How much is the Fiat? 100, right? 130? The Harley was 100, right? Fiat was more or less? No, it was more than 100? I don't remember. But I think they have very similar value overall. Go your gut. You're gonna like either of these. Just just personal feeling on what you think you like more. I will, that's kind of... <laughs> that, that kind of advice applies to every LEGO set. <laughs> I, I, I tried never to answer like, what set should I get? Like, the one that you like, you know? Watch some reviews, build your opinion, feel the set, go to the LEGO store, check it out. Can you afford it? Do you think it's good value? Buy it. I never say like, oh, you should buy this. Nah, I don't think it's a good advice. You say always like, I don't know, watch my review or something and see your opinion. You may not, you may disagree with me, what I had to say, for example. Um, and in the end, you're gonna buy what you like and what you think you can afford. That's, that's all it comes to. It's not rocket science, choosing a Lego set, honestly. And Lego, you know, in 95%, like 99% of cases, has good value. There are very few sets that are like clearly overpriced and not bringing that much value, but it's, you can count them on your, on, you know, the fingers of, a, of your single hand, basically. Most of it, when you buy a Lego set that you like, you're gonna like it. You just have to like the set in the first place. Don't force yourself to buy any Lego. Buy what you think you're gonna like. And most of the time, you're gonna be correct with yourself. But yeah, we are here like us, YouTubers, reviewers. We are here to help you choose your... To help you just understand what the set offers, but not necessarily to help you with your decision. Right? We, we are like trying to build opinions, but honestly, like the best way you can take away from a review is to just like feel the feel of the set and like if you think you're gonna like it that's all it takes i'm gonna switch to this camera just because i'm it's getting high um this set is getting tall basically so i think you're gonna see more of it once i build like this because like even if i move the camera slightly like here you can probably see what i add here but I think it's gonna see more when I'm full screen, actually. And I, most streamers do not even have a second camera, so I'm, I'm, I'm being fancy here. I'm being just fancy, you know. Oh, Fiat was like 90? I think so. Yeah, I don't remember, honestly. I think they were like the very same, similar price than, uh, as the Harley, I think. Yeah, hard time to choose between both great sets, so either either is good. Is a pirate Barracuda Bay still out of stock? I think so, yeah. This set will go on and off. I'm I'm calling guys, I'm calling this set to be set of the year. I'm calling it at this like right now. Wait for the next year's like Toy of the Year awards in New York. It's gonna be set of the year. You'll see. I'm calling it. You can you can quote me on that when it happens. If I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I think I'm calling it. We have June 29th, right? 
I'm saying, Mike from the Cool Factor is saying that the Barracuda Bay will be set of the year from LEGO. At Toy of the Year New York Awards 2021. For, t for the year of 2020, that is. We love that year, don't we? Great year, 2020. Thank you. <laughs> at, at, at least in LEGO it's a great year, okay? I think it's a, it's a very good year for LEGO. I'm not talking about the delays or anything. I'm talking about the set stock. Uh, I mean, not the stock, the set lineup. Okay? I think it's a good year so far. And we're not even halfway there yet. So when it comes to actual quality of the sets, I think we're good this year. Despite all the other circumstances, that is. Mm -hmm. This set is getting pretty tall. I mean... Oh, you're right. We don't have the Baby Yoda yet. Oh, snap. There is a strong contender. If that award will be anything like fan vote based, then Baby Yoda will win for sure. But if not, I think just sheer quality of the Barracuda Bay might land it like some good awards. Oh, no, I hate this. I hate applying stickers to the inside of these bricks because you can never remove them. Like, honestly. I know they're like bookcases and whatnot, but yeah, getting into that in there, it's that, that sticker stays there forever. It's You have one chance. You have one chance to apply it. I hate it. Uh, and I, I can't even... See? Okay, so it's there and I if, if it's crooked, I don't think it is, but if it was, I, there is no way I can remove it without damaging it. So yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, these go right here, okay. My treehouse is in pieces because, again, it fell off the shelf. Honestly, I'm not joking. So I gotta rebuild at some point, but yeah. Since then, I, I lost the space to display it. So I keep it in the box. I ordered pirates in April. And they just... <laughs> wow! I mean, I, I waited, I was on back order, but it took like four, three weeks, maybe? It wasn't too bad. Yeah. I forgot about that Baby Yoda. I know, it's gonna be a set this year. Oh, um, I think I was moving stuff and my kids were like in my room and I think I knocked it with... Uh, like an elbow or something, it was on the corner of my uh, furniture and it just and uh, it's oh, everything just went I I collected everything I hope but I did not check for any piece damage or any like this set has a bunch of brown pieces and if you guys know enough like brown pieces tend to break in Lego for some reason uh, I think it's the mold or just the consistency of the I don't know what it is um, the like density of the pieces maybe so I did not check for any damage to the pieces I just collect everything and just put it back in the box but it was like that since like few months now <laughs> um, I'm not, I don't feel like rebuilding it because I just don't have space to display it back again back then I had like less sets than I have right now and the place that the the treehouse used to be at is taken by I think the Barracuda Bay right now I, no, I, I won't blame my kids. I, I think it was my fault. I think I knocked it over. Yeah, you can always blame the kids. It's the easy way to go. <laughs> but I don't think they're at fault here. No, I, ta I take full responsibility. For the breakage. For the fate of this set. I'm gonna rebuild at some point. 
If everything goes well, I'm gonna be moving, um, hopefully by the next year, to a bigger place. And I'm gonna have my actual LEGO studio there, just a room for for this. Um, and for sure, I'm gonna get some some proper epic shelving, and I'm gonna build my, my real LEGO man cave. And that's where all these sets will emerge from their boxes. Um, this is bag number five and there is one more to go. So I'm almost there. I'm pretty much pretty confident that I'm gonna be finishing not that late today. So I'm building the um is that Slackhorn's um office? I think so. Let me know guys. I think that's Slackhorn's office. Because we have the potion class at the uh, the first floor. And the second floor, I think, is the Slackhorn's uh, office, if I'm correct. You guys keep talking about that Batmobile. Man, if I had the money right now, honestly. I mean, thank you so much for your donations, guys. These go for budget for Lego sets in the future, but it's, it's not, not there yet for me to buy the Batmobile for now. I kind of like stretched my budget lately with that Harry Potter import from Poland, so this was kind of like a kick in the budget. Kick in the bucket for the budget. Um, so that means I w I'm, I'm not able to afford anything right now while being reasonable with my spendings. Plus I got other expenses to go through. So wait, why did I not build the minifigure for this set? Is that Luna? Oh, yeah, so I think sele minifigure selection wise this set might be even better than the the burrow because we we, we get uh, Luna Lovegood Forget about her Entirely does she have any accessories? What how, how did I Why did I forget about her? No, she's the only one in this set, and she doesn't have any wands or accessories, which is interesting. Okay. I can show her right now, actually, because I forgot to build her. Hatching. That's Luna. Again, the characters are top-notch when it comes to printing both legs and uh, upper outfits. She has, actually, she does have a um, glossy silver finish. You can see it's it's reflecting the light both on legs and on the torso and Luna looks like this wondering why she's not getting any sort of accessory like no wands, no nothing everybody else has a wand in this set but she doesn't get one probably I'm gonna just give her one from the uh, spare ones I think that's gonna happen that's what's gonna happen okay Lego store employees or Lego store people are always so friendly. I have oh thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> you know I work at the Lego store, right? <laughs> yeah, you know. I know we're friendly. We're awesome people. The only the best people work at the Lego stores. Those are like I still, I'm I'm still friends with them. It's so nice to always come over and say hi, even I don't work there anymore. Like we had the best crew. I'm the OG crew. I opened the store here in San Diego. So I've been there with them for like three years. It was best entry level job I ever had. <laughs> Can I co confirm what the Lego store employee discount is? It's 30% for the first three months. And once you get past that period, it's 50%. Seriously. But you have a limit how much you can buy per year. I think the limit keeps changing. So I don't know how much it is. But I think it was like... Two or three thousand dollars per year in Lego prices. So yeah, I got a, quite a few sets for myself uh, with steep discounts. I think my biggest takeaway from Lego store when I was when I used my discount and all the VIP points was getting the Bugatti Chiron for like six dollars. VIP points plus Lego employee discount. That was a huge of a deal. 
I think that's the biggest thing I miss the most about working in a Lego store. If I work right now, I would get that Cyan like right away for the discount with the discount. Maybe I should rehire myself there. Maybe they could. Maybe they can um, take me back <laughs> if I had time to work another part time. I had a friend. I still have. A, I mean, a friend that still works there. He used his discount in uh, like before March this year. He was out of his limit by March. <laughs> so yeah. Once you got past this limit, you can't use the discount anymore until next year. A manager gets a job just to buy hundreds of hundreds of baseball packs. Uh, it won't work because the managers limit how many sets of one kind you can get. Sometimes you can even get the exclusive stuff right away. Like when, say, example, when a Falcon comes out, employees are usually uh, not allowed to get the discount the, the launch day. Um, so it's, it's the, by the discretion of the manager, so you would have to wait like a few weeks to get some hot sets. So I don't think uh, somebody, any employee would be able to like buy 20, even like even five battle packs when they come out, maybe one. But the manager can also say, hey, like there is so much demand, you guys have to wait for your discount. So you can't get them right away. It happened for me a few times, like I think it was with the... Um, I think the idea Saturn V, when it came out, it was so popular that we just sold everything to the customers. So the uh, employees had to wait for their copy until we restocked a few weeks uh, after. And then I got mine. Um, and then it sat in my box for like a year and then you guys see me build on the stream. But yeah, that's, I had to wait a few months to get it with my discount, for example. So yeah, it depends on the store, of course. But my manager was super cool, dude. So very easy going and very helpful in many cases. I'm back. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, Lego is very generous with their discount and they're like it's the best entry level perk you can get from any retailer, I think. Like come on. 50% of Lego sets? Dude, like I was so happy being allowed to to buy so many sets I would never even picked up because of their price. And with a discount it's just so much more um fun to buy lego it's like yeah if you can get hired in a lego store you get some cool perks plus sometimes you know if you perform well you will get free sets uh, from the store sometimes depends on the manager like you can win a raffle for being like a good employee or a customer gets you a good survey and the manager gives you a, an older set from the display you just you don't get the box or but you get a built set you can take home it happened to me too I have a bunch of friends and Duplo sets that I took home for my kids because manager gave it to me because I was performing well. And I got some old friend sets that my friends, my kids are still playing with. I never paid for them. So, you know, if you get a good manager, um, it's the, the job is super fun, super easy. You get to play with Lego all day and have fun, fun people to talk to. Of course, there's like retail stuff like you talk to some... Sometimes you get a bad customer that's like just mouthing you, but... In a Lego store, it rarely happens, honestly. People are just like so cheerful coming to the Lego store, and like there's the best people to to serve uh, your service as a as an associate. Um, the cool events, you know, you get to see stuff early. Sometimes you build stuff early because Lego store needs uh, displays uh, early on, and sometimes you know we build sets before the release. Had to be hush hush about it, but it happened. Yeah. So I highly encourage, if you guys can get hired in a Lego store, I highly recommend it so much. If The only reason I left Lego store was just time, time restraints, and have more time for other things. But if I, if, it, if time wasn't an issue, I would still work there. I love this job. If, you, if I had like, you know, eight extra hours a day, or just a week, I would just go to the Lego store and work st still work there, honestly. Like. Uh, number six. Okay, some more masonry work. 
Good, good, good. Oh, oh, I forgot. Yeah, so now it's... Um, this tower is a Ravenclaw dormitory. Forgot about that aspect of this set. It's Ravenclaw. So we're building the uh, the sleeping quarters. Forgot about that completely. Mm. The nose keeps itching. What's up with that? Yeah, I work at Lego. Yep, three years. I I actually opened. I was in the OG crew, opening a Lego store here in San Diego. Second Lego store in San Diego in uh, UTC. Um, the first store is in Fashion Valley. That's been here for years, but yeah, I opened the store. I was in the process when they were building the store, so I seen all the ins and outs of building a Lego store. We actually, uh, we side of the construction, I was stocking the first shelves, we were building the shelf furniture, uh, building the pick brick wall. It was fun. I, when I was hired, uh, it was two months. We, we had like 25 people hired initially. And you know, as usual in the US, you get hired that many people and the team just makes becomes smaller and smaller over time because people like leave or they don't, they don't like the job for some reason or they, they find out they're not passionate about Lego. And in the end, it was, I think, like eight or seven of us left with the managers and then like two more people left. And in the end, when I was like leaving after three years, it was only four people that opened the store with me. It was like three people, like me and three po people and everybody else was new. And the manager was the old uh, manager. But in the end, from all the 25 people, it was like four people that stayed, including myself, over longer than three years. So it was fun. I love this job, honestly. And I think that like, I worked while, while I was at Brick Vault. And that was basically the best LEGO years of my life. Because, I mean, right now it's really fun too, right? Um, but I, I, I had two jobs that involved LEGO and only LEGO. So it was it was really fun. It was like everything was bricks in my life. Now it's a lot of bricks, but not all of it. Ah. Eh. Okay, easy, easy. That's easy. It's a big sticker. I think I I'm gonna. I'll take that. Yeah, you want those discounts? Get yourself hired in a Lego store. I think they're still very generous when it comes to employee perks. It was fun. Forgot I have only one headphone. that oh it's gonna be a what some sort of a desk I have no clue oops not this one is that a bookshelf what is it <laughs> very nice oh it's like moving that's cool. Did the Ravenclaw has some sort of like a, a hidden bookshelf or something in their in their um, sleeping room? Was that it? I have I don't remember that. I'm gonna show you guys probably guess what it is, but it seems like it's a moving bookshelf. The white panels. I don't know structure integrity. I don't know. Seems like it's um, it's just to keep the structure, I think, so that the plates uh, of the floors are more stable. And welcome Tasman Briggs, by the way. Seems that's what it is. Just for structure uh, integrity. Oh, is that the like Clive? Uh, Claire Vorens, Claire Vorens, how do you say it? Um, like future telling book? What is it? Okay, so 
Okay, so it's a, it's a really cool little um, storage. There's like the boy who lived. Same print as from the uh, private drive set. The boy who lived. In Voldemort's voice. Okay, 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 okay. Almost done with this one. Jeez. <laughs> Sorry. See, so that's why. How much do I break? Oh my god. I'm sorry, guys. I wasn't planning to do that. Uh, too much pressure. And it broke. I'm sorry. I didn't want to scare anybody. I think I just pushed too hard on it. But I don't think I lost anything else. Okay. Jesus! What is this happening? Because it's like, it's only on one single seat, so that's why you need a, a window like this on this side too. Because I'm pushing on it, and it just keeps breaking on me. So there's your questions answered. <laughs> there's your question answered. I'm sorry if I scared somebody twice at this point, but... Um, but if I try to attach this, if I push here, it just breaks. What? Okay, I think I fixed it now. There we go. Okay, it's gonna it's gonna be fine once I connect the floor actually. <laughs> Miss Scusi. My daughter can place the stickers better than me, lol. I know they're always better than me. Yeah, my daughter is also like very good at stickers. I should give it to, the, to her. It's always a challenge for me. No matter how, how long have I, I've been building Lego. I'm sorry for all the noise. Just the set was fighting me. I wasn't planning for this to happen. The set was li literally fighting me. Okay. And I think I broke... Yeah, I, br I broke the... Um, Okay. Probably some my kids heard me like screaming like what what's happening? Is is he okay? Okay, and I think that's back five done so. Yes sir. Okay, so we can switch the camera and just show you guys what's up with that. Woo! So we have uh Ravenclaw uh, sleeping room or dormitory or whatever you call it. So this is the thing I ask you. So this thing kind of moves. Is that something that they had uh, in their uh, dorm room? Like some secret doorway or whatever? Inside that bookshelf, whatever that is, you have the boy who lived print and also uh, Claire Warren's um, book that has a sticker. You see with the crystal ball and the same sticker like in the previous bookshelf from uh, lower floor. And just get it in there. Come on. Ah. So they just like sit there, but there is no th nothing that holds them. Um, and yeah, nothing else, just a Ravenclaw banner and two beds and a, and a blue feather for the ink and the letter. So that's about it. I still like it. I think it's cool. Okay. I'm going to bed. Continue doing. Yeah, I mean, one bag left. Uh, it's like almost 10, 20 minutes to 11 p.m. in California. Thanks for joining, guys. Thanks for the stream. This Harry Potter said they look great and fun to build. Hey, Tasman Bricks, my, my pleasure. Thanks for watching, though. Can't wait to see more vlogs from you. I like your editing style and your attention to detail. Thank you. Um, there is, I don't think you joined before, but I've been to um, to LA this past Sunday, yesterday, and uh, to see the Cybertruck from Tesla, because it's on display in one of the museums, the Peterson Museum. And I, yeah, I shot a vlog. I, I started editing it. So I think I should be done, hopefully, 
sometime this week. Yeah, so there's one more vlog. Uh, I have like two vlogs in the works. One is like a regular vlog when I do stuff and uh, this one's gonna be just that museum vlog when I go to see the Cybertruck. Uh, it's, it might be boring, might be not. It's mostly like just showing you a cool cars the whole time. But I like the, the experience. I think uh, I was super excited to go see it. So definitely wanna share that with you. That's the last bag, by the way. Yeah, I'll see. Uh, I'll, I'll try to edit this this week. How about that? Not sure when I will post it, but I'm gonna for sure find time to edit. Somehow. Somehow, I hope. Yeah, this week is looking busy for so far, but... <sighs> I have a podcast that I promised a guy to be on the podcast, and I have to find time for that. Um... Yeah. Oh, so many things. 12 in Missouri. Yeah, it's getting late. California is almost 11 p.m. Okay, the last of the bags. That finishes the whole thing. And honestly, after that long of a build, um, and we had Draco Malfoy in this one, by the way. I still think I like the burrow more. Let me finish and just compare these two. Also, he doesn't get a wand. So, okay, so Luna and the Draco, they do not have wands in this set. Draco has some really cool outfit as well. You can see the slithering colors in dark green. Uh, blonde hair, that's the angry Draco. He's gonna be doing something with the tower scope, so can you guys recall the scene that's from? Would be awesome, thank you. Mike is on MNR's podcast. Oh, Brickman, I, I, have, I have already been a guest of MNR. I was episode 84, I think? Check it out, it's, I, it's already happened. No, this is a different podcast. It's a, it's a viewer of mine, I think. Um, that wants me to be on there. I don't uh, rumble with uh, Russell. Rumble with Russell. It's like a, a podcast that I wasn't familiar with, but he, he invited me, so I said yeah. I wanted to record it with him on the weekend, but I was doing the, the vlog and I had some family business to take care of, um, which is basically family time and stuff like that. So I didn't really find time to do it, but I think I should respond to him and find time this week because I was I've been. I'm terrible with scheduling things, like, I hate being busy. Uh, I keep saying to people, yeah, let's do it, and then, like, I, I go silent for, like, two weeks. That's my, that's my biggest flaw. So I think I want to get this going. Um, I just have so much work to do lately. But, yeah, there's going to be a smaller podcast than MNRs, I believe, but it's, it should be fun. What did I? Oh, yeah, the, the book keeps falling over. So, okay, so we're building on top of that thing, gotcha. I'm gonna replace that book later. Oh, so that's the sticky, sticking out tower, cool. Very cool. That's the last of the bags. Yeah, so, podcast with MNR was super fun. I think it was a nice episode, I liked it. We did it like a few months ago. What's the biggest bit of culture shock you encountered when you moved to the USA? Everybody just wanting to small talk, you know? I, I don't know, maybe I was familiar with the Polish people being so reserved and you just don't talk to strangers on the street in Poland. You just don't. You don't go to the shop and say, uh, how? How is your gate going? You don't talk to the cashier um, in, a, in a grocery store in Poland. You just like scan your items and get the heck out of there. That's what you do in Poland. People don't like talk like, have a nice day, how's it going? Like, nobody cares. So the biggest shock was here in the US coming to the first you know, random grocery store, the, like the first day we arrived, like, hi, how's your go going? Did you find everything okay? Did you find everything you wanted to, to look for? Can I help you find something? How are your kids? Like, wh wh what? Wh what are you talking, are you talking to me? And I had to get used that people just chit chat all the time. In California it's it's I, I, I hated it but now I like it it's nice that everybody's so friendly at least in California 
And I know they usually don't really care, they're just polite, but it's just so nice that people just chat to you in a store, just randomly, be it a cashier, a customer passing you by, or whatever it is. It doesn't happen in Poland, like most of the time. People are just like so reserved, so like minding their own business. So that was the biggest shock. Like two days ago, I, I got used to it, so I, 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 right now I'm much better than this. I actually am very friendly in a store. And I'll, I walk in a, into a store to do groceries and I see the mangoes for like super cheap, like three mangoes for a buck. And you know, I like mangoes. That's, that's mango juice, by the way. And I, oh, I, I start buying them and this lady comes past me and looks at the price and looks at me and tells me in Spanish like that these are super cheap, like esta muy barato. And, and I was like, uh, si, si. <laughs> and I, you just like start chatting in random Spanish. I was like, I don't know Spanish well, but. And that situation would never happen to me in Poland, like ever. I'm just chatting about how cheap the mangoes are, you know? So just things like that, you know? And also in San Diego, it's easy to like, you know, to chat in Spanish in the store because people are Spanish here. There's a lot of Spanish people, like Mexican. Um, so, must be a California thing. California is very friendly. I, I hear you. I heard that not all the US is like that, but I don't know, maybe, maybe just San Diego is like that. People are very nice here. San Diego is, I think, is is, is maybe uncommon for this. Um, I mean, it's called the America's Finest City, but I don't think it only comes how the city looks and how vacation-like it is. Um, but people are actually very friendly most of the time. So maybe it's a California thing. I think maybe California is just more, much more like happy overall because we get sun all the time and people just like don't complain and are just not grumpy all the time maybe maybe that's what it is hello squidman welcome to the chat thanks for joining dude thank you so much how are you building this then this does not come out for another month i they are out in europe so i i had them sent over from poland that's the only way I was able to get them in the US. And I think Canada should be able to have them. Now that I think about it, I should have get, got them from Canada somehow. I think it would be cheaper, but I got them from Poland. In Europe you can buy these, it's like, like there is no big deal. But in the US, nada. We're kind of behind, this year especially. Have you ever, ever been to New York? Okay, yeah, I get you. I've been to New York, you're right. The New York is not as friendly, okay. Yeah, yeah, I feel like New York is not friendly very much. That's true. I should have, I should have thought about that, yeah. Must be a California thing then. Yeah, New York wasn't as friendly as, you know. Honestly, when I was to New York, I enjoyed the city very much. You know, it's a nice place to be, a nice place to see, but yeah. Riding the subway a few times, even going to the beach, I was almost like robbed at the beach in New York. And because it was summer and we went to the Coney Island um, for just some, to, to see the Atlantic Ocean. And I, I almost got mugged from my backpack there because it was so crowded. And I think, I, I specifically remember when we were leaving that beach in, um, in Coney Island, I was eating my hot dog from Coney Island because I those are pretty good hot dogs. And I said to my wife, I miss California. And I miss, I miss the beaches of San Diego. And that was true. And she said like, yeah, I feel the same. And the, the moment we came back from that vacation to San Diego, the very next day we had to go and spend time on the um, one of the white beaches that we have here. And it's like, it's so much more better. Yeah, so I, I feel you. I think you might be right. I think it's a California thing. Yeah, especially the, the ocean vibes, it's, it's better in California for sure. Yeah, I think New York has, has 
you know, it can be very nice city, I, I bet. But I, yeah, I don't think that's as, as California like. California has a very specific vibe to it. I don't know if that's the, whatever you call it, the surfer culture or just the sun every time or just people being more, even it's expensive as heck, you know? People seem to be more happy in here, I guess. Maybe. I don't know what, what's the case here. The sun helps for sure. The prices do not help whatsoever. You have to like, there. there is the sun tax, as we call it, the vacation tax that we all pay in California, be it prices for housing or gas prices or anything is expensive here. Everything is expensive here. Probably a wage I'm making in California would have me like a month I would live here in California. That same amount of money would make me live like probably two, three months in other states, maybe except New York, because New York is also expensive, like even more expensive than, than probably San Diego. Uh, but you know what I'm saying, right? You know what I'm saying. I still enjoyed that trip very much. New York was fun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch those cameras maybe for this one for now. It's getting higher, so... I mean, the set is getting high, tall. It's a bit annoying about the Star Wars sets. Some places already have the summer sets. Yeah, and we're here in the US stuck with the whole pandemic and no stock of sets. Yeah, I feel ya. Yeah, it's not... It's weird. It is very weird. Nice. Okay, so that does the roof. But wait, are there any places actually getting um, Star Wars sets? I don't think they're out yet at all. Like not until not until August at least. Right? I think that's the case. Okay, okay. I feel like a cookie. I mean, I feel like I want a cookie. These are cookies from Poland. Mm. It's like a Jaffa cake. Strawberry filling with a sponge lo um, bottom and chocolate top. They call them the Delizia, but I think the proper, the, the like English name is Jaffa cakes. But I think they, um, they originate from Poland, as far as I know. Hefe, the boss cakes. Why is my nose so tickling today? It's like, I don't know. It's I'm not I don't I'm not sneezing or anything. I don't have a runny nose. It just seems like there's some ah something inside. I'm in uh, Nor uh, New Zealand, so they're still releasing August first, but a month early. That's ridiculous. Uh, like, is any country that does any country have? early Star Wars access? That would be crazy. I don't think that's happening. They would be... Uh, if anybody gets Star Wars sets anywhere, they, they would be all over the place on the internet. Like, reviews would be just popping out. So 
So I don't think anybody has towers yet, right? So... Oh! Oh, snap! So which countries do actually have the Star Wars sets? I, I, I bet, like, Ryan is over it right now trying to get them. I, 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 I'm sure of that. Which countries? Do you guys know? I don't think it's worth importing or like paying premium for just getting them early. No, after after this Harry Potter, I don't think I'm gonna do it again. I I, I did I do enjoy these sets quite a bit, but now that I think about it, I just could have waited. Maybe. I don't know. It seems as it's always too expensive to get stuff early. But yeah. If this year's launch lego launch agenda is just so chaotic it's like nothing is certain everything is all over the place seems like lego doesn't even know what they're doing at least i feel that way like it's more like i don't see any official announcements like this is available this is available no like people just saying oh by the way you can buy this here like what people just like finding out randomly you know that's oh this is available like Lego did not say... Like, Lego, come on. It seems like they don't even know what's happening. But I don't blame them. I think the production is really taking a toll. Um, so probably that's the main reason, of course. So they, they can't keep up. I'm sorry, guys, doing that with my nose, but it's like... I can't get rid of that itchy feeling. Maybe it's the dry air, dry air in my room. Maybe that's what it is. I have a small fan blowing in my face right now. So it's not AC for sure. Love the detailing of that tower here. It's not like I have a runny nose, it's just like itchy. Oh, I don't think I have a sunburn. No. It's the inside of my nose. It's not the outside. Of it. It's just like, just in the inside. It's like that feeling when you have a runny nose, but I don't have a runny nose. So I think it's maybe allergic. But I don't want to sneeze at the same time. It's just this feeling that the tip of my nose is just itchy. Inside. Maybe some, some piece of hair <laughs> just got stuck in there or something. I don't want to pick my nose on the stream. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's like okay it's out now now that would be horrible to see so i'm just gonna keep doing this oh, come on no if i had sunburn i would like feel the tip of my nose or like my cheeks or something it is to get sunburn in california right now because like it's kind of like overcast but it's very warm outside during the day so if you don't use sunscreen you get uh, a sunburn very, very fast. Keeps keeps coming back. I just... It goes away for a second and keeps coming back. Just a few more bricks. Oh, okay. So, it's, it's that scroll showing some sort of a, a constellations and was that scene with draco malfoy can you guys remind me what it was <laughs> nz sunburn is part of our culture if you don't use sunscreen you get burned pretty quick yeah i bet california is not as bad but you gotta be careful as well i got sunburned quite a few times here in san diego not being prepared for it Oh my god, my nose is getting worse. Mm, Mike, is there an American phrase that you heard when you first came here that you did not understand or did not make any sense to you? <sighs> American phrase that I did not get any sense. I, I bet there was, but I can't think of anything right now. American phrase. I, I, I bet there was something that I was like, what are you saying? But... 
I don't recall anything right now or what it sounded like. I mean, I get mo most of the idioms or like specific phrases right now in American language. So I get some of the slang or, or weird talks uh, right now. But when I came here, I don't remember what was that something that really struck me. That was um, just like, what I didn't get what they're saying. Oh, I think I didn't, I didn't understand, like, do you catch my drift? Like, do you understand me? Do you catch my drift? I, I didn't get what they're saying. And like, oh, I, I know one. Um, I'm not sure if that's the case in other states, but in California, people, people shout like, shotgun! When they want to, like, sit in the front uh, seat of the car first. When they, like, you go with the friends and, like, somebody shouts shotgun, it means they reserved the front passenger seat. And when somebody first said that to me when we were driving somewhere, I had no idea what they're talking about. Like shotgun! And they just like go in the middle of the car. That means you're like, you have to go to the back of the car. You can't sit by the driver. I don't know, it's stupid, but why, it's, why do you shout shotgun? And now we get demonetized because weapons mentioning. And I should have said weapons. No, it's, it's a catchphrase. It's like... Uh, I have no idea. I still don't get it why it sounds like that. I don't know why it's... Shut up. It's a worldwide thing? What? I thought it was a California thing. Well, you learn something every day. So we get the tower elements, which is cool, 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 cool. And I think those are the last few bits of the whole shtick. I'm back. Yeah, welcome back, Micah. Um, yes, we're almost done. That's the last few pieces of the last bag. So um, this build took me um, three hours and four minutes now. So not too shabby for a stream of just under a thousand pieces. <laughs> Probably I could have done it in like two hours and something without streaming because I took a break to talk at things and talk at things and talk at things, you know. So I, it's usually the case. Streams are like 30% more time to build or even more. Sometimes even more. Oh, I like these pieces. Wait, did I miss something? Because he had that ring. Did we build that ring yet? That gold ring? I don't think we built that yet. Okay, never mind. Not yet, I think it's the last piece. Okay, a bunch of stickers to apply here to just extra accents and stuff. Just some... It doesn't really say... Okay, so it does say how it goes. Okay, I'll take that. And the last one. Oh, sticker is done. Stickers are done. Just this last one. Just do some accents of the masonry of the tower. Okay, let's do that. And then one more here. Again, the tippy top of the tower. I've been here for every minute of the stream. Cool, dude. Thank you. First, nice. Thanks for uh, staying so long. Appreciate it. Three hours. Yeah, three hours and six minutes right now. Yeah, we had some lag in the beginning, but I think it it, it was just like a simple glitch. Nothing too fancy or uh, serious. So, we are good. Okay, and this goes right here. 
Oh, nice, cause yeah, there's like a studs. Oh, well, I, I like this the design here. It's like a half half tube. Yeah. Okay. Jesus, that nose is killing me right now. Mm. Go away. Oh, maybe. No, I don't think I'm getting sick. Maybe it's uh, it's the allergy. No, it's not the virus. <laughs> I don't think the first symptom is a is a sneeze is a runny nose. No, I I get these runny noses randomly on the on the evenings just because of some allergy usually. Oh, nice build here. Oops. Pretty cool build for that thing. Um, can I show you? This thing. Really nice build. It's like a, a silverized or like silver coating um, ball. Oops. And a bunch of gold. So really cool. Um, design for this. I really like it. I really like this one. And this goes... Okay. Very simple and yet effective design. Okay, it goes here. It's on a rotation. So you can actually spin it. High fever? I don't know. No, it's nothing like I don't feel bad or anything. It's just like tiny runny nose and tiny itchy thing inside my nose. From my experience and how I felt usually about this, it's allergy. Usually it comes out at night for some reason. Ooh, games. Fancy. Okay. Ooh, the telescope is pretty cool looking too. Okay, and this one goes on the top of the tower. Really cool. Yeah, so it's... It is astronomy tower overall, right? Okay, and just the tip. I think everything else seems like an extra. Oh, and we just get like a few extra pointy things here. Yeah, so I think the design is pretty sweet for that top of the build. Um, really cool details here and there. I'm gonna do show you everything in a sec. But yeah, looks fun. Okay, that's I think concludes the build actually, and we can actually assemble it. Oops. We put that book inside there. Nice, so the set is done. Now we're gonna just place it in a proper fashion. has more studs than usual to keep it together but the because it's tall so it needs extra studs and this goes together with this like that Do I get the pins to connect it? Oh, I did not place the pin. Oh, wait. Oh, this way. Okay, never mind. We're all good. 
Okay, so now it's connected. Okay, so that's the um, that's the set. Looks fun. I I look at my screen right now. It looks pretty good. Wow. Oh, and we ha we can also connect the um, the. Green, greenhouse okay so it's very elaborate design nice okay so that's it for the build let me place everything so I can give you a, a kind of a tour there we go all right so I'm just gonna grab my camera I'm just gonna maybe a bit shaky but we're good so front looks solid then we have the greenhouse from this side and the back I'm gonna I'm gonna do a full tour on the back but I just wanna rotate this set so guys you guys can tell what's the general consensus of like the the exterior of the set I think it looks pretty good and the tower really goes up there yeah all right the, the things include I, I'm holding my camera on one Okay, let me see if I can get... There we go. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, so bottom half is just the um, kind of like an archway, entryway. There is a broomstick and that festive um, tree display of sorts with those elements from the Chinese sets. Um, let me see if I can straighten that up a bit. There you go. Um, then lower floor, we have the potions class with the book and all the potions and everything. And then we have the mandrakes growing there you can as you, as you guys have seen you can remove each one of them and um, these are printed right there so it's pretty cool like it's very good scene recreation so we have that that's the lower portion of the set and then if you go slightly higher we have we have the uh, i think slackhorns uh, office you can see some bookshelves in there. I don't have much light in there to go through, but you guys can see there's two bookshelves. Oh, maybe from this side, actually. There we go. Um, yeah, there's a letter on the desk. And right above is the dormitory for Ravenclaw. Also, you can see that shelf, that bookshelf is sort of like a moving element. I'm not sure if that's designed to do it, but Maybe that there's some secret entrance behind it or something, but it has a book and a newspaper, two beds, Ravenclaw um, banner. And at the very tippity top, let me see if I can... That's like a cool shot, kind of. This is gonna... Okay, the camera can stay here. <laughs> so you have the... Um, I'm gonna show you the, the scope, the ma magic... How do you call it in Harry Potter? I don't know. It's a magic, like... Uh, scope or, or sorts there is this um, sort of like a scroll with some sort of uh, I don't remember that scene so you guys probably can can tell me from the movies because I don't remember that much what this was all about but in this set Draco Malfoy is actually here in this he's, he's plotting something there so he's supposed to be in the tower and this piece is really cool actually with the um, constellation of planets or whatever that is uh, it's an astronomy, astronomy tower after all it, it's on a rotation device so it's actually very cool and you can see the facade also it's quite fantastic you can see especially this design this here is really cool build uh, with all the pointy towers um, you know it's really really something for sure I'm just trying to like pan the all the like masonry and the camera is on a bulkhead so it's I can't level it but you guys can tell what it is how it looks like and it's it looks fantastic in my opinion is it still better than the bureau I don't think so we're gonna take a look at the bureau in a second but yeah minifigures real quick Luna love good um, Draco Malfoy cool uh, same like actually he's very comparable to Harry when it comes to the print you know, Slytherin and Gryffindor, festive outfits, basically. There's that. Um, the waiter, or sorry, should I say Neville Longbottom. There we go. He actually gets this pretty fun 
pretty. He does look like a waiter. I, th I think wasn't there a joke that they like took him for a waiter on that on that party, because he dressed up like too much a bit. And I love his like hair mold, very fun too. And then we have very two very similar girls. We have uh, Lavender Brown and uh, Hermione. And Hermione wins because she gets amazing silver printing for her shoes. Overall, very cool dress print as well. And both both are great. Um, Lavender has some amazing hair mold with a bow tie in the back. Hermione not so much, but yeah, they kind of I kind of mix them up because they compare uh, quite. Uh, they're quite comparable. We get the Hedwig uh, as well, and I think the highlight also I w I forgot about the Slughorn. And, uh, and Ron, I'm sorry, I, I forgot too many figures. They were like in the, in the side. So Horace Slackhorn and Ron Weasley. Also great prints. I'm just trying to like bend my hand here. So you guys can see what I'm doing. But yeah, the back prints. Good figs. I think the fig selection is better than the, um, than the burrow. And I think this is the highlight also, the fondue fountain and the, the festive table, the cookies table outside. That is also a wonderful build, actually. That fountain is actually highly, highly uh, desirable. Well, well made, just well made. Okay, um, cool, let me switch to the... Yeah, good set. Um, but I think I still like the bro better because the bro was so surprising to, to overall see. I'm gonna move the camera away for now. The design deserves a raise. Probably they all do. For what they do with those amazing sets okay so just a quick look um my my closing thoughts and i'm gonna say goodbyes uh to the stream but i want to just want to have as i have them on the table basically i just want to talk a second on uh you know the comparison between the bureau and the astronomy tower come on luna stand there okay so i'm gonna place this one here you guys will be able to actually tell and I'm gonna make a video, by the way, with all these sets from this wave. Like, do like a comp like if you don't wanna see individual reviews, I'm just gonna do like an overview, sort of like opinion-based video about which sets I should go for. You, maybe I want to go for first and stuff like that. I have like two left. I think the I have the rooms of requirements. So I think that's another stream, and the Forbidden Forest is also another stream. I think two of them in one stream actually. So that's gonna be the final uh, things. I have the Hedwig, I have the, yeah, I have all of them. Um, so yeah, as you can see, the, the Astronomy Tower has a bigger footprint than the Burrow, but the Burrow was such an enjoyable set because of all those crazy details here, all the like kitchen building and how much you cramp in there. It's actually very fun looking all the, like building all the details, the, the roof work, the colorfulness, the functionality, you can actually uh, get this set opened this way as well. So overall, if I had to spend a hundred bucks, I still would go for the Burrow, just because it's a great standalone set. And this one kind of shines the most when you connect it to the other ones from that lineup, those expandable Hogwarts sets. This one can totally stand on its own. If that's the only Harry Potter set you're gonna get, I think you're gonna get this one for sure, because it's, it just serves so well. As a, as a display piece, as I said, that's really, really well made on its own. This one, I think it might be the best set of the expandable Hogwarts lineup. Minifigures win in this one. In this one, you get the Weasley family for sure. You get uh, Molly Weasley, which is excellent minifigure as well. You get uh, uh, amazing uh, Fenrir Greyback and Bellatrix Lestrange. Harry Potter in a bit of a different outfit. You get um, uh, Nymphadora Tonks as this one. So I different characters but i think the prints are winning on the on the astronomy tower overall uh if i was if i had to pick um, the minifigures only right okay so yeah two sets hundred dollars hundred dollars thousand forty seven pieces nine hundred seventy one pieces so depending on what you like to have in a set i will still go with this one it's bigger i think it's better value overall but if you have the other ones from this lineup then you gotta get this one as well. Fantastic set, very fun build experience. Uh, took me about yeah, three hours, 50 minutes. Without the stream, it would be like two hours, 30 maybe, if I was faster than this. But yeah, looks good, pointy towers and everything. Like it, I like both. I mean, I'm biased at this point because I like both of them. 
And I just like I, I just like this summer wave. It's super fun now. Okay, guys, this is it for the stream. Thank you so much for joining today. It was fun. Three hours late night with Mike. I had fun. I hope you guys did as well. Um, yeah, expect more videos from me. I'm probably gonna review this one at some point this week. I'm gonna do a vlog this week from that Tesla Cybertruck sighting in the LA in the Peterson Museum. Definitely gonna put some content out this week, hopefully, uh, without getting too tired of all the other work I have to do. Um, yeah, you guys are super awesome. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, Vladimir Redbrick. Uh, thanks, guys. Ethan, all you guys, Partial, Mike and Ike. Vlad, uh, who else was it? Brickman, Partial Studios. So many people joined today. Uh, 2.23 a.m. Oh my god, go to sleep. And thank you so much to Arman for a single donation today, 2.79. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. I hope to see you guys in the next stream. We're gonna build these guys at some point in time, maybe sooner than later. Um, and yeah, we're gonna hang out as usual, all right? Yeah, you guys are awesome. Okay, have a good night or good day, whatever you are. And I hope to see you in the next one. Good night. Peace out, bye.